begin the class so welcome to this course on pgtrb so today's class is about uh, reading text closely and this is by professor academy and let's start the class if you have any doubt you can ask in between um, uh, doesn't matter which language tamil or english so um, if you have problem with tamil you can raise or i will try to be between tamil and english no problem at all so today's class this is today's class number one we will look at uh, william emson's the seventh type of ambiguity so that's the today's focus number two we will i will give an introduction to new criticism that's part of uh, literary criticism and theory uh, unit 8 then i will let you know what you should read further maybe um, the entire day today and let's uh, and one more thing before we go all the best for the exam um if you have any doubt you need not wait till the end you can ask in between no problem at all uh, feel free to ask any doubt and one more thing i may also ask you a few questions if you know the answer you can answer or maybe i will tell the answer so no worries so let's go to the class so part 1 william emson's the seventh type of ambiguity so the first question is what is ambiguity ambiguity na enna you know when we say ambiguity the kind of vague or unclear one way puriyala it confusing so when we look at this word for the first time when in its general use poduva when you say ambiguity is romba ambiguous a irukku abadina vague a irukku puriyala confusing a irukku so the word ambiguity has a negative connotation generally when you say this sentence is ambiguous this is vague for look at this sentence example visiting relatives can be a nuisance visiting relatives can be a nuisance it has two meanings i mean that is lack of clarity in the sentence what is nuisance here or who is in nuisance here visiting relatives that visiting relatives namma relatives visit pandrada illa relatives namma paaka varangala and visitor da so relating sorry visiting relatives that you are going to visit relatives that's a nuisance or the relatives are coming to visit us that's a nuisance so there are two meaning irukku the sentence is not very clear which meaning is preferred endha meaning podhuva solla varanga visiting varangale avanga avanga nam paaka varangale avanga vandu nuisance relatives ella nuisance vandu paakravanga illa namma relatives ve paaka ponu illa adu nuisance da so the first sentence visiting relatives can be a nuisance it has it you can simply say the sentence is ambiguous it is unclear or uh, kind of vague which meaning is preferred we don't know and for that you need the context context therinja adu enna meaning therinjiralam context illa adha po it is a vague sentence so when we use the word ambiguity it simply means in the general use in general use it it is lack of clarity but in the ellathey one change pannar yaar na william emson so william emson gave a positive connotation to, to this word ambiguity so negative connotation a irukku generally ambiguity nu sonna or negative meaning ana when william comes in came he said ambiguity has a positive connotation in literary use literature portha varaikum when you say okay in the poem undu romba ambiguous a irukku abadina puriyala nartham kediyadhu when you say this poem is ambiguous it means it is rich of meaning romba meaning irukku nartham Uh, look at this example um, you uh, see so when you answer uh, you can speak or you can use the chat box so the first question so you have a sentence here thou still unravished bride of quietness can someone tell me this line is the first line of which poem or an aggression and sir beauty yes ode on aggression and by uh, keats so look at this first sentence then that's also prescribed to you uh, ode on aggression term is prescribed to you we will discuss it Uh, later but this is a first sentence here the this sentence is ambiguous when i say this sentence is ambiguous idu romba ambiguous a irukku abadina idu vandu confusing a irukku lack of clarity illa kedaiya meaning vandu romba adhigama irukku nu artham enna irukku abadina sonna it has two meanings generally especially the word first thou it refers to the point is addressing uh, the, uh, the earn and the earn vandu address pandrathu thou still unravished bride of quietness okay or a newly or a new bride she is uh, yet to go to the wedding bed uh, first night la pola 
சோ அப்படிப்பட்ட ஒரு அன்ராபிஷ்ட் ஷி இஸ் எட் டு பி டிப்ரைவ்ட் ஆஃப் ஹர் வர்ஜினிட்டி அதுதான் அன்ராபிஷ்ட் ப்ரைட் ஆஃப் குவாயட்னஸ் ஏன்னா தர்ன் இஸ் நாட் ஸ்பீக்கிங் அது இட்ஸ் எ மார்பிள் அது பேசல முடியாது so it has two meaning the word still when you say still abina number one still abina it's not moving still number one meaning it doesn't move he is very still adha still kudukranga mangaliya adhe maari dhaan still kudukuradhu abina you don't move you just freeze up in the earn when the still earn abina it doesn't move at all it's an object it can't move it stands still all right adhu number one meaning when you say thou still unravished bride of quiet means not it idu varaikku you are not destroyed till now you are as you are earn konde edhu aagala it is preserved in the museum or uh, he has seen that in a museum or it stored somewhere you are a beauty so it has two meaning number one still is not it and number one, number two still when you say you know not moving so when you say still not moving immobile still is not it both the meanings are you know depending on the context if you know the thou it refers to earn earn kurikidan therinja this word still has two connotations uh, two meanings number one you have not moving number two not it so this is what emson is talking about emson apporta varaikku ambiguity this is ambiguous ambiguous ingra for rich in meaning if there is only one meaning ah idu vandu marble da idu vandu move agadu abin if it say only one meaning that's not literature if literature says okay this poem is this idu oda or meaning abin literature solita adu vandu ange mudichu poidu the process is over but it invites a lot of interpretations adukku ambiguity is one of the way one of the ways to understand that rich no so emson's definition of ambiguity in any verbal nuances however slight in a mari chinna slight meaning are necessary which gives room for alternative reactions to the same piece of language enna or piece of language any sentence are getting or word are getting edu anar irukum first or meaning kedikum then it gives us alternative reactions edhu venal kudukka mudiyum appdinu sonna over what you over what padikirappa pudu pudu artham vandukite irukum so he says that is ambiguity so this is emson and this is the gist of your essay this essay the seventh type of ambiguity so this is the general introduction so ambiguity means rich of meaning when it comes to literature in general use lack of clarity visiting relatives okay we'll go to the next one what is the function of ambiguity other function in poetry la it enhances the experience of poetry even the still abin or or theriyala abin you know it adds so many meaning to that one sentence and you read out on aggression earn first sentence if it is next next it will go on and on can someone tell me any one of the beautiful lines from ode on aggression earn that's the first sentence generally earn is described as what, what historian anyone if you have read the poem um, earn is described as dash historian um, the word starts with the s Sylvian historian. Sylvian historian. S Y L B I A. Historians. Yes, Sylvian historian. So he in the in the first paragraph he starts describing the urn. Urn and the describe under. So the first one the bride under. Then he says a historian. You know it records everything on the on its surface. Ella me irko. Then there is another beautiful line. Maybe you can try and complete. Heard melodies are sweet. Those unheard are dash. sweeter sweet the beauty so heard melodies are sweet those unheard are sweeter this is one of the most famous line uh, in ode on aggression art uh, there is a professor here in uh, presidency college chennai and he translated that line into tamil heard uh, not that line another line i'm uh, sorry uh, heard melodies are sweet those unheard are sweeter i actually translated it he translated another line in uh, or to the west wing okay here heard melodies are sweet those unheard are sweeter ketta ragangalai vida ketkada ragangal inimiyanadu you know it's like elevraja you just uh, it rings in your uh, ear so that is the beauty of that line heard melodies are sweet those unheard are sweeter okay what is the last line of the poem ode on aggression earn bid is to the truth beauty okay 
beauty is truth truth beauty and what is the figure of speech anyone so what uh, maybe uh, what's uh, the figure of speech starts with the letter c and it is pronounced a k um in this figure of speech what do you do you invert the line of the first phrase or sentence you just repeat um, you know different way beauty is truth you immediately invert the entire phrase beauty is truth then you say truth is beauty so if you invert this kind of a sentence structure you have a sentence structure then you reverse the sentence structure like this beauty is truth truth beauty there is a figure of speech for this um, technique maybe i will give another famous example from everyday life when going gets tough the tough gets going when the going gets tough the tough get going so this is another example for uh, uh, that figure of speech so beauty is truth truth beauty um there is another uh, sentence you have when the going gets tough the tough get going maybe like you only the tough will go till the end A any answer for the figure of speech the figure of speech in beauty is truth Sir, like beauty. the palindrome ah uh, no 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 palindrome one word for instance malayalam if you read the backward you know a, a phrase or a word that can be read the same forward and backward that is palindrome like malayalam or the word like e e d e if you read it backward it reads the same that's a different one uh, here beauty is truth here you have to inverse the phrase or word this is a different from uh, palindrome p a l i n d r o m e palindrome a word or phrase or a sentence that reads the same forward and backward here you inverse the first phrase or uh, sentence maybe it the answer is chiasmus c h i a s m u s chiasmus c h i a s m u s when you say chiasmus this is a figure of speech beauty is truth truth beauty okay okay then now the meaning is different when it comes to this essay ambiguity has a positive connotation it simply means the quality of being open to varied interpretation evlo nalu interpret panikalam it is open it's not one fixed meaning appalam kedaiyadu then emson emson says he gives an example first example uh, pun he says pun is an uh, a, a good example for ambiguity we call pun ambiguous when we recognize that there could be a puzzle as to what the author meant or a pun or a vaartha velayattu word play if there is a word play and if you want to crack that word play and that is ambiguous you know it has more than one meaning right it is open to interpretation for instance there is an example here uh, i i am giving this example from julius caesar so it is a opening scene enada vala paakra what's your profession this is his answer a trad sir a mender of bad souls romba tenavata answer solran and he is also describing his profession so actually it has two meanings any case what's his profession this citizen in uh, julius he is a mender of bad souls he has actually answered one one he has answered the question of that officer right mender of bad souls uh, that refers to his profession s o l e you know foot it refers to he is a cobbler one who uh, you know makes or uh, mends uh, bad foot uh, you know shoes and uh, others so he is a cobbler so that's a straight answer a mender of bad souls but the tone with which he says a mender of bad souls sir romba thanavata undu poite na yaar theriyuma a mender of bad souls da abinna he is referring to his soul anma s o u l so there is a word play in the word soul s o l e s o u l when you say soul here it refers to the bottom part of the foot soul and s o u l refers to anma you know something that is um, we try to achieve for so he says i can mend your bad soul ne romba corrupt a irukra i can mend your soul so there is a word play if you know the context that who is speaking of course a common citizen speaking to an authority so he is speaking in a mocking tone if you are aware of the context if you are aware of i mean the literary context it it appears in julius caesar and if you are aware of who is talking to whom and because of the context because of the tone it has 
it is ambiguous it has more than one meaning and what, what, number one is he is on, answering the straight answer what's your profession he says i am a cobbler instead of saying cobbler a mender of bad shoes then he says you are also corrupted i can mend your soul so that is a word play maybe in tamil this is very common you know in any language pun is very common maybe uh, i um, right now i am reminded of one famous puzzle like a, you know that's what emsen means in tamil uh, by the way before i proceed uh, do you have any problem with uh, tamil all of your tamil if i speak in tamil um, anyone cannot understand Uh, please let me know so that uh, i will switch between both tamil and english if you have problem with uh, tamil if you can't understand tamil then i have to uh, switch again and again or i will also can speak in tamil also anyone is there anyone like that who can't understand tamil yes sir i am uh, dr rakesh pande and i can't understand tamil i am from hindi okay fine taking area okay, okay. thank okay. you sir okay so we have people here who can't understand tamil so i will switch between both but whenever i use a tamil example i will make sure that i translate that is that okay okay fine so here uh, let me give a tamil example for others but uh, also for dr rakesh i guess okay so this is a puzzle in tamil ananda me rendu peru moonu dosa avanga rendu peru vandu you know adu pikama vandu equal share pananum you know this is a puzzle ananda me rendu peru moonu dosa அதை பிக்காம வந்து அவங்க எல்லாம் வந்து ஈக்குவலா ஷேர் பண்ணிக்கணும் அந்த தோசை ஸோ இஃப் யூ ரீட் திஸ் தமிழ் பசில் ஏனோ ஃபார் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் ஸோ திஸ் ஹவு இட் ரீட்ஸ் தேர் ஆர் டூ பிரதர்ஸ் பட் த்ரீ தோசை தே ஹாவ் டு ஷேர் இட் ஷேர் தெம் ஈக்குவலி வித்வுட் டேரிங் இட் ஆஃப் டேரிங் ஆஃப் தெம் ஸோ வென் யூ ரீட் ஃபார் த ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் த தமிழ் பசில் தேர் ஆர் டூ பிரதர்ஸ் ஐ மீன் ஐம் ஆக்சுவலி டிரான்ஸ்லேட்டிங் and the, but there are three doses they have they have to share them equally without tearing off the dosa so this is the first reading if you know the tamil puzzle anna thambi rendu peru moonu dosa pikkam und equal share pannega so what is the puzzle how the puzzle is solved anyone sir anna sir thambi rendu peru moonu motto moonu dosa pikkave thevilla all right so the same puzzle tamil puzzle if you read with the pass there is a meaning so if you read with the pass anna thambi rendu peru so if you pass this is how the puzzle reads elder brother and two younger brother so this is the second reading first reading there are two brothers but if you read the same tamil puzzle second time with the pass this is the meaning elder brother and two younger brothers so the puzzle is solved three those is they without tearing of them they can equally share the puzzle is solved right so this is one example for ambiguity you know it gives a lot of meanings and we are excited to crack that puzzle uh, please others put it on mute yes so this is what we call ambiguity it is it excites you and we experience something new and it is open to varied interpretation so we go to the class proper seven types of seven types of ambiguity 1930 by william emson this book because of this book the word ambiguity acquired a positive connotation in english in the book published on the other it got a new meaning before that the word ambiguity has only had only negative connotation okay uh, let me give you one example uh, type 1 first type seven types of ambiguity there are seven types he lists seven types the entire book each chapter and the concluding though you have uh, seven types so first type a detail is effective in several ways at once ore nerathla it gives a lot of meanings um, this is the example uh, emson gives bad ruined choirs where late the sweet birds sang from shakespeare's sonnet 73 um if you look at this sentence bad ruined choir so and the comparison you have sweet birds sang so it's a kind of a metaphor a kind of a simile two things are compared you have choirs church la choir irukanga they sing boys and girls ah uh, then on the other hand you have sweet birds they also sing they kind of a comparison and the comparison is good monastery choirs are compared with sweet birds 
and the comparison is good because both sing quads boys and girls sing then birds they sing and they are sitting in a row or standing in a row and they are sitting in a place it is made of wood maybe those days even now in some uh, some churches so it is made of wood so this is the first the moment you see this bare ruined choir where late the sweet birds sang maybe this is one meaning we get but still ambiguous in the sense it is it has a lot of meanings why because it is ruined it is no longer uh, the church is no longer there it was ruined and the birds are not singing there it's the past and if you know the context maybe the historical context in which the sonnet is written but uh, that is against a new criticism we will talk about that later now abandoned by all so it also gives another connotation kind of a historical one if you know the context the protestant destruction of monasteries so in england the protestants had certain monasteries uh, roman catholics so maybe this poem is referring to that destruction where people used to sing alla paaduvanga ipo adu illa you know it's no more there it has two connotation now number one very straight okay a kind of a metaphor choir compared with birds and the setting a church the pulpit uh, and uh, uh, the place where the choir stands and sing it is made of wood then standing in a row then uh, birds uh, sitting on a branch of a tree or birds uh, sitting in a row on the branch of a tree the comparison is good it's kind of an image uh, you get the image there then if you look into deeper konjam ulle pona then you get this meaning okay the monasteries are destroyed by uh, the protestants now there is no singing at all it's empty maybe shakespeare is referring to that so this is example type 1 a detail is effective in several ways at once ore samayathile you get lot of meanings from different angles so that's the first type of ambiguity so there are seven types of ambiguity i am not explaining all the seven types and for you seventh type of ambiguity is prescribed and that's the essay uh, we are going to uh, look into today but this is a general introduction so before we proceed another question so how many sonnets were written by shakespeare 154 154 fine right. and the sonnet collection or it's also a kind of a sonnet sequence uh, is uh, dedicated to whom uh, it's a kind of a puzzle still now anyone mr wh wh beauty so mr wh but if you know the context we don't know why because the collection the sonnet collection was first published by a pirate uh, we don't know how he got those um, sonnets by shakespeare so he published i think throp t h o r p he published unofficially even we, we may not be sure with the permission of shakespeare so there is a dedication we don't know whether the dedication was from shakespeare or this pirate publisher so still there is a puzzle to be solved uh, wh refers to who and there are a lot of answers so today maybe you can go and check out this one immediately i think uh, before 10 or 11 you will get my notes there you will also find all the answers and you also have a section on shakespeare a unit on shakespeare and at the bottom of the unit there is a general uh, there is a mention that you should be aware of shakespeare's poems and sonnets okay so we move on so this is the essay proper the seventh type of ambiguity so we know ambiguity ambiguity is rich in meaning uh, a poem or any piece of literature that has a lot of meanings that is open to interpretation so or a positive connotation is there so this is an outline this is a gist it comes in the context i mean the contents of the book itself the seventh type is full of contradiction marking a division in the author's mind seventh type oda essence enna what's the essence when you read the ambiguous two or more meanings it creates a contradiction so that is the seventh type it's not like first type uh, you can get several meanings from several angles that is first type this is the seventh type and the last type and the other meaning you get you get one meaning and you also get the another meaning that another meaning contradicts the first meaning opposite are so in a same work or a same line gives two contradictory meanings so that is the essence of seventh type of ambiguity 
and that shows there is a division in the author's mind maybe when he he or she wrote that maybe that is intended we don't know then in the same essay the concept introduced by freud sigmund freud uh, the austrian psychoanalyst that's evoked invoked uh, for literary purpose then Uh, Emerson also analyzes the use of negation or opposites in terms of ambiguity, and he gives example from Shakespeare, Keats, Crashaw, Hopkins, and Herbert. So this is the outline of the seventh type of ambiguity. So this is a list of that seventh type: a division in the writer's mind what is the division so look at this example so he gives a lot of examples in the beginning then he proceeds with literary examples so this is a general example he says seventh type is psychological rather than logical uh, it's not so logical like that puzzle tamil puzzle or any other puzzle or soul soul word play it's more psychological look at this this example is given by emerson two percent white when someone says um, what's the color of that Two percent white. Uh, you know, it's more like, in the sense. What's implied? A, a kind of a shade of grey. It's not fifty shades of grey, by the way. So a very black shade of grey. It's white, black, grey. You know, it's in the mind. The color is actually in the mind. Uh, whether it, is, it looks like black to you or grey to you or kind of whitish black grey, we don't know. Um, so it's two percent white. So that is. Psych is more psychological. How you look at the color because the colors gives a lot of importance to you. Maybe why I use blue for my top headings. Uh, maybe I'm feel I'm more comfortable with the uh, blue. For he here I go for black, especially some bold here. Then that is one example. So this is the description he gives for seventh type. More psychological rather than logical. So readers also come in. Maybe look at this context. The symbol of the cross. and he says the symbol of the cross is ambiguous ambiguous in the sense it is open to interpretations a lot of meanings at least two here if you know if you know the cross before the birth of christianity even after christianity generally when you say the cross a kind of a crucifixion it's a form of punishment so the cross earlier used to even now when you say the cross that it's a in a means of punishment or an instrument of torture that is one meaning if you know the context now when you say the symbol of the cross is a holy sign you know jesus christ has sacrificed to himself for uh, humanity and if you know this context the christian context the cross is not a symbol of torture it is a kind of forgiveness you know that's what he taught to the world christianity so it has two connotations now kind of an ambiguous and it is psychological rather than logical so don't look for logic here it's it's more rooted in faith if you feel if you are if you are from that faith then you have this meaning the symbol of the cross the moment you know if you are a christian so if you are a hindu it means different and if you are aware of that background and everything it, it gives a lot of interpretations so this is a uh, seventh type and he described the seventh type of ambiguity as more psychological rather than logical so you have two examples here two percent white or the symbol of the cross next freud should be invoked right so sigmund freud uh, austrian psychoanalyst you have uh, psychoanalysis as a field of study okay what's his famous book sigmund freud 1900 Anyone? Sigmund Freud, the interpretation. Interpretation of dreams. I the interpretation of dreams. dreams. Yes, beauties. Uh, suddenly, I'm uh, reminded of another book called the Interpretation of Murder. Sorry. So, interpretation. There is a book called the Interpretation of Murder. It's a novel. I read it. So, that yes, fact so. is here. Fact is here. Anyway. Yes, uh, the interpretation of uh, dreams. So, Freud said. your unfulfilled desires you know they they come to you in the form of coded images encoded images in your dreams so if you want to decode those images nam thoongra pa na irunna kana varum in dreams you get a lot of images and those images are not direct from a direct alert uh, it has lot of you know meanings so how are you going to understand the images in your dreams 
ஏன் இந்த கனவுல இது வந்துச்சு ஏன் இந்த பூ வந்துச்சு இல்ல நான் ஏன் அப்படி இருந்தேன் சோ இஃப் யூ வாண்ட் டு இன்டர்பிரெட் தோஸ் கோடட் இமேஜஸ் இன் யுவர் ட்ரீம்ஸ் ஃப்ராய்ட் செட் தேர் ஆர் த்ரீ ப்ராசஸஸ் இட்ஸ் கால்ட் ட்ரீம் ஒர்க் அந்த ட்ரீம் ஒர்க்ல என்ன ஆகும் அப்படின்னு சொன்னா யுவர் அன்ஃபுல்ஃபில்ட் டிசையர்ஸ் டார்க் தாட்ஸ் எவ்ரி திங் ஆர் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் கோடட் இன் டு இமேஜஸ் அண்ட் த இமேஜஸ் இந்த ஃபார்ம் ஆஃப் த்ரீ டைப்ஸ் நம்பர் ஒன் சிம்பலிசம் அந்த இமேஜ் வந்து ஒரு சிம்பிளா இருக்கலாம் இட் ஸ்டாண்ட்ஸ் ஃபார் சம்திங் லைக் கிராஸ் கிராஸ் மாதிரி ஏதாவது ஒரு uh it may have some symbolic meaning number 2 um it's more condensation so that's the word here uh, that's the term used in uh, psychoanalysis by sigmund freud he says in your dreams images are condensed into a lot of images apdi vandu romba confine panni ella aluthi press panni pala images all are put together into a single image a lot of images are condensed into one it has layers of images but namalukku one or image an theriyum so condensation refers to you know putting pressing to pressing so many images many images into a single image it has a depth of meaning layers of meaning so you have to read that image yeah the why that image uh, you know came in my dream you have to understand that so he says that term is very useful for the profit of the understanding of poetry why because in poetry also we also get images so that's the connection between psychoanalysis and literary studies so in psychoanalysis sigmund freud you know speaks with a patient uh, who suffers from neurosis or some other psychological disorder apo they uh, he speaks when he speaks to the patient the patients reveal their dreams or some other thing when they speak and he takes notes apo so he maybe he looks for those images i'll not pani par why because the patients they don't reveal everything directly straight up for example kanavula appo solla matan so they are coded so sigmund freud have to you know, take down the notes and he interprets so that's the title the interpretation of dreams and how to decode that's the book the book is all about how to decode your dreams encoded a irukum so it may be a symbol it can be of the form of condensation condensation you can easily identify with the figure of speech metaphor kind of an implicit comparison uh, when you say simile simile is explicit direct uh, she is like a rose or when you say she is a rose she, when you say she is a rose it is ambiguous what are, what are, what do you mean by she is a rose she is beautiful or she is young or you are simply saying okay she is like a flower who may die soon end of the day we don't know so it is open to interpretation so when you so metaphor is a kind of related with ambiguity so that's not his meaning so condensation images condensed into a single image so that is metaphor what is the image of a metaphor rose is there the rose sort of function in we don't know and rose also uh, you know carries other connotations if you relate with sigmund freud uh, especially movies in movies in earlier tamil movies or in uh, english movies when they show you two roses coming together kissing and leaving it's a kind of a uh, metaphor for a sexual scene which can't be portrayed sila scene la appo kaamikka mudiyadhu screen la so kind they have to go for symbolism like dreams dreams mari ungalku rendu poo vandu pakkathla pakkathla varama irukum two flowers especially uh, rose roses they come together a kind of you know they shake and leave here the rose is not simply a rose it's like uh, a poet said um 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 you no know, rose cannot be sometimes just rose um, you know it has a lot of connotations but anyway here that is metaphor similar way and if you want to understand the term used by sigmund freud that is condensation freud also used another term i told you freud used t- three terms to understand or decode your dreams number one symbolism number two condensation third anyone condensation uh, that is another term used by sigmund freud anyone uh, it comes under dream work dream space work w o r k so go and check out dream work symbolism condensation one more anyone how to decode dreams it starts with the letter d this place can someone finish it off displace okay fine displacement displacement okay so these are the three terms 
symbolism condensation displacement when you say displacement you can associate displacement with metonymy another figure of speech uh, you describe one image through the image associated with that image so in the image you describe pandradhu aduk associated ana equal ana kind of you describe it with another image for instance chennai so how do you portray chennai in a movie chennai kaamikana movie la epdi kaamipinga any film if you watch a tamil film if you want to know the okay this uh, this movie is set in chennai modalla they you know they show you chennai central so chennai central is a location uh, it's a landmark it's a part the part stands for the whole chennai right the city so it's a kind of a synecdoche or metonymy it stands one thing stands for another kind of an associated image so in how can you convey an abstract concept called a city chennai so in order to describe that it is coded in the movie la epdi code panirpaanga chennai or in earlier films they show uh, lic building uh, the tallest at that time or you have marina beach or mahabalipuram so if you in single image you know uh, streams of image Uh, they show all these images uh, chennai central then lic then marina uh, maybe madras university or that entire road then it goes on and on then we believe or we are made to believe okay this movie is set in tamil nadu chennai so that is displacement so you convey one image through the image associated with that image so that is displacement okay by the way i am also explaining uh, psychoanalysis to you it's actually i'm digressing but it's very essential to understand uh, ambiguity you also have uh, a separate unit on literary theory and criticism under which uh, we should discuss uh, uh, psychoanalysis so on that particular day this will come uh, useful so simply put freud said in order to interpret your encoded dreams you have three ways number one symbolism what it stands for kind of a symbol right associated in the context then you go for condensation which you can equal with metaphor then displacement which you can compare it with metonymy m e t o n y m y metonymy it's a figure of speech right okay then there is this ambiguity freudian opposite freud and solrara in your dreams you have something right something comes to you idu da enak venum idu da en dreams la vanduchu so your unfulfilled wishes comes true in your dreams that itself is a paradox as well as a kind of a contradiction i told you this ambiguity is all about creating a kind of a contradiction in a single statement right see the essence of your dream itself freudian concept itself is a ambiguous concept ambiguous in the sense uh, full of contradiction why because what you want you know that you can't fulfill in reality gets realized in your dreams kanavula mattum na adu palikum வெளியெல்லாம் அது படிக்காது ஸோ வாட் யூ வாண்ட் இன்வால்வ் த ஐடியா தட் யூ ஹேவ் இன் காட் இட் ஆனால் அது கிடைக்காது ஸோ இன் ட்ரீம்ஸ் யூ அச்சீவ் இட் பட் இன் ரியாலிட்டி யூ காண்ட் அண்ட் இன் ரியாலிட்டி யூ டிசைர் ஃபார் இட் யூ லாங் ஃபார் இட் யூ கான் கெட் இட் பட் இன் யூர் ட்ரீம்ஸ் யூ கெட் இட் ஸோ திஸ் கைண்ட் ஆஃப் அ கான்ட்ரடிக்ஷன் இஸ் அவைலபிள் இன் ஃப்ராய்டியன் அனாலிசிஸ் ஆஃப் ட்ரீம்ஸ் அண்ட் எம்சன் சேஸ் திஸ் இஸ் ஆம்பிகுவஸ் இட் ஆஸ் இட் இஸ் ஓப்பன் டு இன்டர்பிரிட்டேஷன் த ட்ரீம்ஸ் so the opposite defined by your context in the patient avangalukku and the dream in the context la that dream comes or the symbols used in those dreams so if you know all these things then you understand ambiguity okay then we go for another one uh, emson also gives an example from uh, um, for ambiguity he says primitive languages like um, arabic uh, hebrew and uh, other la- egyptian languages in those languages earlier Uh, even in some now same word has its opposite meaning or the word covers its opposite meaning ore word and the word and the opposite meaning adey cover panidu you know this is a different concept you know this is related to ambiguity you know or word and the word and opposite on the word e kuduthru maybe i don't know arabic i don't know hebrew uh, maybe if you know you can give an example or we will restrict ourselves with english this example is given by um emson emson gives this example a rescue horse in the rescue ngra vaarthai enna meaning what is the meaning of the word rescue if you look at this word rescue this is the meaning someone who is restless because someone has been resting too long romanaarama rest eduthanaala restless a irukkar you know it covers both the meanings 
So when you say he's restive, I mean he's restless. Why are you going to go there? Why are you going to go there? Why are you going to go there? We look at people who are restless. Why are you going to go there? Why are you going to go there? You know, that's a contradiction. Why they are restive? I mean restless. Because they have been taking a rest for too long. Why are you going to go there? வெட்டி இருக்கனால என்ன பண்றது தெரியல ரெஸ்ட்லெஸ் சோ தி வேர்ட் ரெஸ்டிவ் ஆல்சோ கவர்ஸ் இட்ஸ் ஆப்போசிட் when you say he is restive that means uh, uh, he is thinking too much he wants to do that do this but actually he has been resting a lot he has uh, he has not been doing anything at all ஒருமால ஒண்ணுமே பண்ணல அதனால ரெஸ்டிவ் இருக்க தி வேர்ட் ரெஸ்டிவ் கவர்ஸ் இட்ஸ் ஆப்போசிட் மீனிங் சோ திஸ் இஸ் ஒன் எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஃபார் फ्रॉम லிங்குஸ்டிக் பாயிண்ட் ஆஃப் வியூ ambiguity then Uh, kind of an image two ends of a stick idum or ambiguous ipo idu edhula starting point what is the starting point of the stick whether that end or this end maybe if you are looking from that end that is the beginning or if you are looking from this end this is the beginning but it is open to interpretation it can changes its place so this is also another example for ambiguity so briefly put i have just given an introduction uh, not me i just summarize the introduction to uh, this essay uh, actually he talks about uh, this essay for the longer but anyway i am stopping here so this is the brief introduction to ambiguity now we will go into uh, literary example so simply put seventh type of ambiguity involves both the anthropological idea of opposite opposite i mean or contradiction it involves contradiction it covers opposite meanings and that meaning is more psychological rather than logical it depends on the context i hope i clear is that just this is the gist of the seventh type and or contradiction irukum opposite meaning clear pannu adukaprama more ungala mind la da irukku and the meaning and on the context so this is the gist of seventh type of ambiguity and what's the effect a fundamental division in the writer's mind you know like you need not bother about what the intention of the author the we are not bother about that but and edho one irukilla there is something in the line thou still unravished bride of quietness when you say that there is something to that word still if you go on go on and on because there is also another contradiction still the word still itself is a contradiction who knows that may get destructed now paakradhu alaga irukku earn very beautiful and it it's uh, marble it's carved with all the images but there is also another contradiction still the கொஞ்ச நாள் அழிஞ்சு கூட போயிடலாம் ஆஃப்டர் பீரியட் ஆஃப் டைம் இட் மே கெட் டிஸ்ட்ரக்டட் ஆல்சோ தட் ஓகே ஸோ வித் திஸ் பிரீஃப் இன்ட்ரக்ஷன் வில் கோ டு லிட்ரரி எக்ஸாம்பிள்ஸ் யூ ஹேவ் நம்பர் ஒன் லிட்ரரி எக்ஸாம்பிள் ஃப்ரம் ட்ரைடன் சாங் ஃபார் செயின் சிஸ்லியாஸ் டே சாங் ஃபார் செயின் சிஸ்லியாஸ் டே வில் ஜஸ்ட் ரீட் தீஸ் லைன்ஸ் கோட்டட் பை வில்லியம் எம்சன் the trumpet is a loud clangor invites us to arms with the shrill notes of anger and mortal alarms the double 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 beat of the thundering drum cries hark the force come charge charge it's too late to retreat so it's a it's set in a battle we know the context the moment we read the sounds you know the image itself the auditory image uh it's self a kind of an onomatopic effect is there so it refers to war and there are a lot of noises the enemies are approaching you you have to fight you can't retreat now there is no time for that you have to fight but if you read it again and again there is a kind of fear maybe who is speaking a warrior is speaking a soldier is speaking or we don't know and uh, that's a, also a kind of fear oh my god uh, shall i run away shall i run away um 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 like the hero or the protagonist of uh, bernard shaw's arms and the man arms and the man odi lama or the mari the chocolate cream soldier who comes in arms and the man shaw so shall we run away like him but it is too late odam dear so what is ambiguous here number one ambiguity you define heroism what is heroism the concept is ambiguous you know the concept heroism involves panic you know terror a part of the heroic mind you romba brave nu sollam romba courageous romba you know but when you say he is so heroic that person knows that he also has a terror as a part fear ngiradhu part of heroic mind so this is the contradiction the word covers its opposite meaning avu romba 
பிரேவா இருக்கும் அப்படின்னு சொன்னா ஒரு பயமும் இருக்குன்னு அர்த்தம் அதான் பயத்தை மறைச்சா நீ வந்து வீரன் இல்லையா ஸோ இஃப் ஆர் ஏபிள் டு கவர் அப் யுவர் யூனோ ஃபியர் அண்ட் புட் ஆன் அவர் ஷோ ஆ அ கைண்ட் ஆஃப் அன் ஆர் ஆஃப் பிரவிட்டி அண்ட் கரேஜ் தென் தட் இஸ் ஹெரோயிசம் so the word itself has a kind of it covers its opposite meaning and it creates a contradiction in the mind of the speaker here so that is a seventh type of ambiguity so here is a soldier who is very afraid to charge against the enemies avan varam padai eduthu varanga ponu ana bayama irukku thoda nadungal da but yet yet the soldier has to march forward and you know uh, attack the foes so this is one example this is ambiguity seventh type of ambiguity and another example is the similar psychological i told you this more psychological than logical so this is the seventh type is more psychological example of a horse the horse is brave you know it has to charge it has to lead um, metal means courage by a continual expression of timidity by it it's afraid then it has to move on afraid move on there is a kind of it's a bundle of contradictions the horse and the bayam irku ana adhe nara vandu thuniva it has to march forward so this is one literary example uh, mzn gives then we go to the five writers um who are the focus of the seventh type of ambiguity we will see one example for each by the way i am just presenting you the gist i am just taking you through the entire essay but it is not the entire essay there are a lot of examples so i am just giving you the overall picture and i am also taking you from the beginning to till the end of this essay seventh type of ambiguity i i have also sent you the edited version of um, this essay to you uh, i hope you have all the uh, edited ones uh, unit 10 with you as a pdf form maybe once the class is over you can read the edited form soon you will get my notes where you will also find the edited notes and also the original text okay the example is from macbeth shakespeare's macbeth so it's like macbeth's to be or not to be it's like a hamlet's hamletian dilemma faced by macbeth macbeth ena prachana so macbeth was told by the three witches hey you will be the king but your sons will not be kings and you have to do some terrible things so he has that four knowledge of the witches which is sultan something is going to happen you know both good and bad you will be king and you have to do a lot of bloody things for that and he has to act like hamlet you know hamlet has to kill his uncle hamlet on the uncle call him claudius he has to take revenge you know uncle on the appa ko nata king claudius but he hesitates why because hamlet needs evidence even though konana he needs evidence so he puts on a play you know um, the most trap and the play ka apuram he confirms uncle na konna so he he tries to kill 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 and at the end of the play he kills claudius similar way macbeth has this dilemma hamletian dilemma to be or not to be king duncan thanoda kaasil ku vandaachu even kollalama venama kollalama venama so there is a kind of uh, 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 confusion is going on contradiction to kill or not to kill the king so that is the problem of macbeth uh, why this problem you know two things is more psychological as i told you contradiction sin he is committing a sin because by killing the king but because of killing it becomes a good act in the sense for him he will become the king so there is a contradiction within by killing the king he will become a king but like a soldier he is also afraid to do that he is so fearful but he has to kill romba bayama irukku ana kollanum illana kedaikad then again another contradiction he is a soldier macbeth appo war ku poi win pannittu varan he is coming from battle in the battle he killed many but now he has to kill only one king so he is afraid so another contradiction so you have a lot of contradictions more psychological in macbeth so that's where this line comes come what come may time and the hour runs through the roughest day so what the first line says come what may come enna anala paathukalam why he is very sure because he has the four knowledge of the witches definitely he has to do that act and he will become the king he has that four knowledge right but he that four knowledge contradicts with his uh, you know soul okay ana but you have to do the deed namada pananum so 
who kills of course the first actor is lady macbeth lady macbeth kathi kodu nee vela kaam padan solittu andha ma kathi eduthittu lady macbeth plunges the knife into king duncan and that's where it goes okay and let me ask you a few questions sir so macbeth is prescribed to you by the way so it is a detailed text in uh, under shakespeare the unit so you have macbeth prescribed is a prescribed text. maybe today you just go and read uh, macbeth the summary or the detailed summary of macbeth if possible read the entire text so the first question macbeth um you have three witches the three witches have a queen or a kind of a head can someone tell me the name of that uh, queen of three witches kate yes yes you, you got the answer can you repeat kate hesate ah, yes that's the answer h e c a t hesit so if you are not aware but it's not a character the char- it's not a present character absent character three witches varanga three witches says we have a queen called hesit h e c a t powerful more powerful than these three witches but absent character in macbeth but one of the important characters in macbeth absent one hesit h e c a t okay now the name of the castle uh, in which macbeth lives name of the castle macbeth's castle kota and the kota de peren macbeth lives in a castle where the king comes and he has to kill and lady macbeth kills by the way then he also kills so blood on both their hands so what is the name of the castle in macbeth or uh, in which they live the macbeths anyone it starts with the letter i inverness inverness yes in verness i n v e r n e s so that is the name of the castle in macbeth in verness fine so you have a hesate then you have in verness so now tell me under uh, one uh, um what is the most beautiful line uh, when it comes to lady macbeth after she did the deed there is blood on her hand of course she rubbed off she wiped off she cleaned those um dots of blood and what is the beautiful line from is again it's psychological it's more like a sigmund freud again i'm bringing sigmund freud here because she is suffering from neurosis after the murder tanker arabian, arabian yes, perfumes uh, all, uh, the perf- uh, all the perfumes of arabia will not sweeten my little hand beauty all the perfumes of arabia cannot sweeten this little hand அரேபியன் <laughs> and the disorder comic uh, you have a manifestation physically uh, she goes mad and on the sleep walking scene le, she sleep walks and she also dies so clear evidence she has gone mad lady macbeth so you have all the evidence series of events murder blood this line all the perfumes you cannot spit in this little hand then that sleep walking scene okay so if you have this kind of uh, image or even symbols to represent a concept or a theme in a drama it is called what uh, the term was uh, provided by t s eliot in his essay uh, hamlet and his problems objective correlative objective correlative so t s eliot in his essay hamlet and his problems he used the term um, literary and technical term called objective object i mean objective correlative objective correlative apna enna so he says when it comes to literary representation if you are putting forward a concept or concept of solra yeah you have to show equal evidence for that concept the evidence in the form of speech form of events form of symbols anything for that matter and the best example is macbeth you have everything objective correlative full of perfect character lady macbeth why she, why she goes mad why she committed 
the first act of you know plunging the knife into the king and the blood is on her hand she wiped it off but psychologically uh, kind of the blood got in her mind kind of imprinted on her mind that is there then there is a sleepwalking scene and she speaks kind of a gibberish so everything all these objects even symbols everything is a clear indication she has gone back and t s elite in his essay hamlet and his problems calls this objective correlative and the same essay t s elite says shakespeare's another play is an artistic failure which play by t s elite hamlet hamlet t s elite says okay macbeth is okay fine it has all these correlatives objective correlatives but hamlet is an artistic failure and he calls hamlet what uh, dash of literature uh, it's a painting uh, you can fill the dash with a painting famous painting from uh, she smiles by the way in that painting she smiles eternally we don't know what oh, the smile God. stands for oh, no, yes uh you know uh, t s eliot calls hamlet the mona lisa of literature and you know, ambiguous we don't know what the mask of madness yeah paithi karana irukra enna prachana appa you know father is murdered kola pantaanga uncle is there you know that he is the murderer kathi eduth solla vendidana munju pochu but that's a problem it's more psychological hamlet is a problem yeah, even he got a chance uncle claudius was praying ana pray pandrappa kola panna kudadhu ana soul vandu it goes to heaven he doesn't kill so here yeah, he the the quarrel is more with himself for a hamlet the quarrel he quarrels with himself not with the world so that's the problem of hamlet so and there is no clear indication why he has to be mad or he is pretending of course there is a lot of clear indication that he is pretending to be mad but not enough objective correlative according to tsi i am not saying but there are a lot of evidences but he says tsi lead says hamlet is an artistic failure yeah abhin sonna it lacks objective correlatives so that's um, one of the essays uh, not prescribed by the way but um, depending on the context who knows question may become so that is uh, ts elites hamlet and his problems okay coming back here so we finished one example from shakespeare we are moving to the next one measure for measure another example from shakespeare so what's the meaning of this phrase measure for measure if you know um, measure for measure tick for tat equal syntax pali ki pali if you want to translate uh, measure for measure apdi ena pali ki pali vaangitaanga what is the tit for tat in this uh, play by the way again this play is prescribed for you but non detailed one uh, macbeth is a detailed one this is for non detail you need not go through line by line but you should be aware of everything about measure for measure this is also prescribed text so this is the line you have in her youth there is a prone and a speechless dialect such as movement so what i am saying these lines are spoken by the brother claudio and he is talking about his sister isabella okay so you have a brother sister here in a problem what is the crux of this play measure pressure in a pali ki pali vaanga poranga so there is a duke who is ruling this place and the duke kena pandraru he says i am na not out of poramba i am going on a pilgrimage whatever it is i am going on a journey abdin solta so he gives the mandate ne rule panna abdin solta angelo he gives the rule to angelo so now angelo is ruling the country but angelo is very strict like a puritan in a problem angelo one says the state has to be moral yavana irundhalum punish panna yav you should not do any you know immoral activity at that context claudio is caught claudio yaar for he knows he is a kind of a, a citizen good but he has got his betrothed pregnant before marriage claudio slept with his betrothed fiance and she is pregnant now and, and in a puritan state it is a um, in a bad act and it's a act of crime now claudio has to be punished and the duke i mean the new one uh, uh, a stand in duke angelo says you have to be punished you have to be put to death apo claudio has to come up with a strategy claudio no claudio has a sister isabella but she is going to be a nun now she is a novice in a convent i mean a christian convent 
she is a training to be a nun a kind of a probationary period she is still a novice young one she is going to be a nun now there is a contradiction i mean brother and sister uh, psychological and stainless that uh, i mean this sentence is from uh, uh, emson so brother is describing isabella so that's the line in she, uh, measure for measure in her youth there is a prone and speechless dialect such as movement now claudio is using isabella sister to convince angelo angelo convince pannu see don't kill my brother anyway he is going to marry that girl so what's wrong in it she has to convince she has to move angelo so that she can save claudio claudio save pannalam enna pannanum angelo isabella has to go to angelo and isabella has to convince angelo please spare my brother chinna paya edo theriyam pantan kutrunga appadina but this line has a lot of meanings especially this phrase to move men Very and nice. also the word prone p r o n e the word prone if you uh, know it's a lying position lying flat on a surface prone accident aicha solvaangala prone accident prone zone adi patta padu kadaga vendidanga same way when you say prone here it's like a lying flat a kind of a sexual connotation and you have moving men move in the sense convince isabella has to convince angelo or isabella has to sleep with angelo we don't know because angelo says you sleep with me so that i will spare the class player your brother claudio so that is the problem in uh, measure for measure and the duke comes back you know the one who went away and he comes up with another plan so that he can um, uh, catch angelo in red hand in another act because angelo sleeps with his fiance or one who is love with uh, uh, angelo uh, instead of isabella isabella ku badala uh, his fiance goes and Uh, he sleeps with that that girl now is measure for measure now angelo also has done the same act can angelo um, you know punish claudio is he eligible to punish claudio now so that's the problem angelo thought he was sleeping with uh, uh, isabella but she he slept with his um, one who is in love with uh, him so now it is measure for measure by the way i hope there is a pun in it measure for measure it has lot of freudian analysis of uh, sexual connotations and not the revenge language this is a different revenge here so there is an ambiguous meaning and claudio is whether claudio says stainless isabella isabella on the romba pure she is going to be a nun maybe he is implying that or he is implying uh, in her youth you know she moved men maybe she can move now the, or she is Uh, he is implying something else we don't know it's open to interpretation depending on the context depends on who reads maybe my bad mind reads like this or your good mind don't read that we don't know maybe um, the black thoughts um, in your mind to read this way okay this is one ambiguity we are moving to john keats john keats example or to melancholy no no go not to lithi neither twist so this line comes in Ode to melancholy uh, uh, in John Keats' a poem. Uh, melancholy is kind of a sadness. Why sadness? Uh, um, like this uh, hero in uh, Edgar Allan Poe's Raven, full of sadness. No, no, go not to Lethe, neither twist. So if you look at it, you have four negatives in the sentence. No, no, then you have the word not, then neither. So you have four negatives in the sentence. so what is lethe is a river in hades i mean hell underworld so connotation is a death someone is going to die the persona of the poem maybe that uh, he or she is going to die on the verge of death there is a kind of a struggle like uh, dr faustus because at the end of the play uh, christopher marlowe's uh, dr faustus there is a struggle he has sold his uh soul for 24 years after 24 years he has to struggle i don't want to go to hell don't drag me to hell mephistopheles then kan katta kapra suri namaskar no at the end of the time then he says uh, i have to pray to god ada first scene le sonanga good angel bad angel comes because the play is prescribed to you dr faustus there's a kind of a debate in his mind good angel versus bad bad angel he didn't listen to the good angel he sold his soul he indulged in necromancy 
and he did whatever you know he wanted to kiss uh, helen of troy everything and finally he struggles with himself right he doesn't want to be dragged to hell hell gana kooti povadhinga appo sir adha eldi kudutaachu la 24 varsham mudichu pochu similar way that struggle is here no no go not to let a neither fist but there is a contradiction the persona knows that he is he or she is going to die sa urudi but the contradiction or negation only emphasizes the death saga porom ama enna ipo so the negation doesn't negate that concept it only emphasizes the concept that's the contradiction that's the opposite here so must have wanted to go to lethe very much saagunu nirupa padara nirupa padu we don't know whether the speaker wants to die immediately or wants to prolong this agony or this agony he wants to put an end to this agony and die and if you look look for you know kids and biography and everything he died of a conception tuberculosis maybe he is speaking we don't know but anyway we will discuss it later we are going to the third one crasher uh him to the name and the honor of the admirable saint therese so here is the line she breathes all fire her weak breast heaves with strong desire of what she may with fruitless wishes seek for amongst her mother's kisses if you know this poem this poem is about a saint a female saint and this is a metaphor the first layer of meaning what's the meaning more christ is the um, groom bride groom and she is more she uh, it's like bhakti bhakti literature in tamil or bhakti literature in uh, india so the speaker assumes christ or god as her spouse so the metaphor is more the union with god that is more of a spiritual meaning but the treatment of the metaphor leads to mixture of feelings also sensual she breathes all fire we don't know what she is passionate about she passion she is passionate about uniting herself with god that is one there also there of sensual meaning so simply put crasho can someone tell me he belongs to a group of poets called jonton including jonton no, metaphysical poets yes metaphysical poets so what's the essence of metaphysical poets you also have the essay by t s eliot uh, the same unit unit 10 fifth metaphysical poet so you have the essay what is the gist of this metaphysical poets uh, according to t s eliot as well as, well as generally metaphysical poets are known for blending two opposite things ambiguity two opposite things in the sense um, they yoke these together spiritual and sensual rendithi vandu onna kalakavendiyad they blend spirituality and sensuality together in such a way you know you can't say this is what they mean you know that is the beauty of literature you can't say you know he is talking about the union with christ or you can't say she is longing for um, no sexual intercourse we don't know it is open to interpretation ambiguous spiritual sensual so when you think of this poem another poem prescribed to you and again metaphysical poet uh, john dens which poem where he compares pair of lovers with the saints to his sky mistress i i am talking about john dun valediction forbidding morning and canonization sir uh, okay we are restricting ourselves with uh, canonization so canonization you have this contradiction so the word itself is a paradox i mean according to clanth brooks and when you say canonization some a saint who is going to be canonized for his or her good deeds for uh, doing miracles and all the other things it's more spiritual canonization the title itself and now what is the contradiction in the poem the poet wants the lovers to be canonized yeah because they also do miracles in what like saints they also die and rise like a phoenix because a phoenix has the power you know to die and it rises from its ash right and he compares that with the pair of lovers who can die and rise and they do miracles like prophets they die and they also rise kind of a resurrection see this is kind of a spiritual meaning one reading of the canonization so you go to that paragraph today i mean the stanza in that poem the canonization you read that paragraph again and again 
it of layers of meanings number one meaning spirituality okay fine kind of a union the lovers a pair of lovers they uh, they explore each other i put it politely and they die and rise like a phoenix and they do miracles so they have to be canonized so that is one of the arguments why they should be canonized why uh, you know lovers should be canonized at all and this is one of the reasons like saints they do miracles like phoenix they die and they also get resurrected <sighs> one meaning can someone tell me another meaning the word die uh, there has a lot of connotations in elizabethan england the word die has another connotation you say die dying of sexual passion rise the rise of sexual passion after the climax so he is actually talking about the sexual intercourse the word die if you know the context and the meaning of the word die in elizabethan period the word die simply means dying you know physical death it refers to the death of sexual passion after the union first union then again the sexual passion is in you know it rises to surface again they go for another one so it's their night the lovers night so it is more spiritual as well as sensual we can't say which is which so this is ambiguity so the ambiguity is one of the essential features of a metaphysical poets so you also have t s eliot's essay now you also have kind of read that is so we are moving to the next one hopkins broad manly hopkins the wind hover to christ our lord so what happens here one who wants to be a saint like hopkins hopkins you know hopkins uh, had this problem hopkins was also a poet also was a saint um i mean um, a priest so he thought indul you know indulging in writing poetry is a kind of a sin because he takes pleasure in writing poetry he thought it's more a psychological problem then he started burning his poems and later point of time his friend saved those poems and published it against his will so gerald manley hopkins his poem famous poem uh, the wind hover to christ our lord uh, again this is the example given by emson here someone is looking at the bird and that is falcon kind of an eagle so there is this bird falcon flying beautifully in the morning you know its flight it is not afraid of anything and the physical beauty is amazing such a balance in the air kind of a somersault you know this person is looking at the bird and he is enjoying you know the you know the act of the bird beauty and there is a struggle in his mind what is that struggle look at that bird what am i why am i struggling there is agony in me to perceive this priesthood or not to perceive this priesthood will i be a good priest or not be a good priest can i renounce this physical world and attain this you know spiritual world no the speaker is in agony and he gets inspiration from the bird and he admires this bird but look at this and there is ambiguity so he wants it's like the freudian contradiction the desire but he is not he wants to be that but he is not that yet unna and nalaiki pogala so first contradiction you see in the context bird undu romba alaga parandittirukku it's known for its that beauty in the air romba alaga work poitru on the opposite side this person is agony kondalichittirukka enna da can i be a good priest patience you need spiritual can i renounce this entire world saapadama irukka mudiyuma idella vittu irukka mudiyuma sex life la irukka mudiyuma no can i think of god every time though he is an agony but the bird is not an agony it is in for you know pure delight it just flies beauty and this is one contradiction there kind of an image brute beauty and valor and act o oh, air pride plume here buckle and the fire that breaks from thee then a billion times so lovelier more dangerous o oh, my chevalier so if you know french the word last one chevalier means a uh, warrior um it comes from the french word cheval c h e v a l cheval means in french horse i told you we saw the same image in few um few slides before horse and a soldier in dryden's poem so there is a kind of a contradiction in the horse right 
it is upright at the same time it leads forward so that is the contradiction also available in the uh, in this point chevalier and you are, i hope if you are from tamil nadu you have this famous actor shivaji ganesan you have chevalier shivaji ganesan so famous actor here classic one uh, shivaji so he has this title called chevalier and that was the title given by the french government for his uh, achievement so now you can understand why the actor shivaji is called chevalier in tamil nadu because the title was not given by tamil nadu government or india government but the the title was given to this actor shivaji by the french government they generally give this confer this award to not only shivaji ganesan there are many people who got this award especially in pondicherry during after independence many got for their excellence but we know shivaji that's why i'm giving shivaji's example so chevalier shivaji ganesan is a kind of a brave one an actor who is known for his acting you know classic acting like modern brando so you have chevalier there so now another word uh, again contradiction buckle seat buckle so it's like a military belt you buckle yourself for heroism there is a fear in you but you have to march forward there is a fear in this speaker he has to move uh, march forward or she has to be a uh, move forward but buckle also means dental konja adi vaangana wheel bicycle oda wheel it can't roll you know evenly natural motion irukadu there are problem odanji pona nanji pona wheel la sari ela odadu right so there is a struggle in this wheel if you have a bicycle wheel i am talking about the rim if it is a dented it i don't think it will just run smoothly it is a distorted incapable of its natural motion so this is more of a metaphor the metaphor refers to the agony in, in the poet avanukku or agony irukku like this wheel or belt so he wants to be like this warrior very firm and move forward at the same time there is a contradiction the word buckle the wheel is not a decided undecided so there is a decision there is kind of an indecision like hamlet so that is the uh, ambiguity here we are moving to the last part the fifth example herbert again metaphysical poet so we have discussed uh, two metaphysical poets uh, today three actually so you have uh, crasho then you have john den we discussed uh, slightly discussed uh, canonization now we are coming to the third metaphysical poet here uh, herbert again a metaphysical poet uh, able to combine uh, spirituality sensuality and contradictions this is one example the poem sacrifice the speaker is jesus uh, here the speaker in the poem is jesus so this is the line given by william emerson lo here i hang chon sin the greater world of the two that's all here the entire poem is kind of a soliloquy or dramatic monologue by jesus christ now he is uh, crucified he is speaking but we are not bothered about that what is the essence here in terms of ambiguity is that the christ figure the complete christ figure itself full of ambiguity we told i told you uh, because emson also began this essay with the symbol of the cross whether it is an instrument of torture or a symbol of forgiveness or symbol of uh, uh, the christian faith is up to you same way he says in the poem the uh, sacrifice christ the figure christ is an ambiguous full of contradiction actually he was a scapegoat and at this because he was a scapegoat he became a tragic hero now or then even now he is loved because he was hated at that time he was hated to the core you know by by the opposite party because he was hated he was loved then hated because god like you can't hate god but since he was god like he was hated again another contradiction there are a lot of contradiction i'm just giving few examples you can read the original or my uh, edited version uh, which is available with you because outcast you know he doesn't belong to the major religion there or major faith there christianity is upcoming at that time creating the possibility of another society so outcast creating a major society a mainstream society so that is contradiction so the christ figure itself full of ambiguous uh, full of ambiguity so again this is by um, emerson now summing up we finished off the essay 
So this is the gist of the essay. Um, you can go it again and again. This PPT will be shared with everyone uh, at the end of the class, so, so it's not worry. So this is the gist of William Emson's the seventh type of ambiguity. So what is the seventh type? The seventh type of ambiguity occurs when the two meanings of the word or the two values of the ambiguity rent me more or I mean more in the sense opposite. Same word carries its opposite word and it creates a contradiction. Opposite so no other contradiction mind like great money. Depends on the defined by the context, literary context mostly. So that is seventh type. So that the total effect is to show a fundamental division of the rights. So we finished off with the yes. I took you from the beginning of this essay till the end, but I left you know, because he gives a lot of examples. Emzen gives uh, the entire essay with filled with a lot of examples, but I I stuck with the just the outline. The outline he gave in the contents page. I stuck with that outline. I explained and um, took examples from few examples of mine. Uh, most of the essay, 99% examples are from given by M. Z. So with this, we finish the essay. We are moving to art. So before that, if you have any questions regarding this essay, you can ask now, or we can proceed with the part two. We have half an hour more. We we have to finish it off first. Any question, or shall I proceed? Uh, if you have any doubt uh, regarding the essay, the essay is over for you, one essay. William Emerson, seventh type of ambiguity. So if you have any example, you can, uh, sorry, uh, questions you can ask now regarding that essay. If you do not have, we can proceed with part two. Any questions? Shall I proceed or? Okay, sir. Okay, no, then. okay. Then. Okay, thank you. We'll uh, move, move to, I mean that this move is physically I'm moving from one slide to another slide. New criticism and introduction. Uh, why I'm touching upon new criticism, you have a unit, uh, unit eight, and uh, number four, you have this very broad topic, literary criticism and theory. I don't think uh, I have to spend one particular class on that. So whenever I cover you know, uh, any unit, in between, I will also touch upon this particular topic, literary criticism and theory. So today I am touching upon um, new criticism, a school of criticism um, uh, inspired from two other school of criticisms. Number one, structuralism. Number two, Russian formalism. So they are the precursors to new criticism. The new criticism community, Rend school, very famous, one of the European. So when you say European, you have structuralism, structure, you are LAISM, structuralism. Can someone tell me the most famous linguist and semiotician associated with structuralism? Without him, there is no literary theory and criticism. Anyone? Yes? Uh, Vijay. Repeat, can you? Sasar. Yes. Brilliant is Sashu. Sashu, yes. Ferdinand. D. Sashur, S A U S S U R E. Sashur, S A U S S U R E. Ferdinand the D. E. Sashur. Ferdinand D. Sashur, Swiss linguist. He was a kind of a father of a field called semiology, S C -E M I O L O G Y. Study of signs. If a particular symbol, my signs. What a word stands for. We will discuss Sashur in a later class, a structuralism in a later class, but I'm saying. Structuralism is a birth of literary criticism and theory uh, when it comes to European or Western literary theory and criticism. But these days we have to be careful, not right? East. So, so you have Ferdinand, the Swiss linguist Ferdinand de Saussure, his famous book, Course in General Linguistics. Course in General Linguistics. He gave a series of lectures in a summer. Then that was compiled by his students, especially two. And they came out with this book called Course in General Linguistics by Ferdinand de Saussure, in which he introduced a new field of study called semiology, S-E-M-I-O-L-O-G-Y, Kuriel. In Tamil, we say semi, uh, sign, S-I-G-N. When you say sign, in Tamil, we say kuri, kuri It's a very simple, normal word in Tamil. In English, it's a tough word. In Tamil, simply casually ask, even that word has an, uh, you know, another connotation. If you know 
another connotation in tamil the word kuri itself is ambiguous uh, in this context i don't know why this word came up to me maybe my dog thought um, in tamil when you say kuri yes it ref, uh, when you say kuri it points to someone that is number one meaning kuri adha idha kurikudu it refers to that that is number one meaning if you know tamil word especially kind, kind of a classic on kuri pen kuri it also refers to male or female genitalia so i think freud is invoked here too anyway from here we move to uh, uh from european structuralism um, sir ferdinand isashu from there you go to russian formalism form f o r m a l s m russian formalism so what is structuralism they study the structure of a system of literature okay so literature full of particular the underlying meaning everything they um, read about the essence of literature literature enna function why why a literary text how do you distinguish a literary text from a non literary text so they study this ferdinand sashur said you know language system has underlying structures similar way literature if you want to understand you know this ambiguity you need an introduction right that all the examples so all pieces of literature here after i don't think uh, even if you look at this example horse itself is ambiguous symbol again freud because horse is, a, is a, also a symbol of sexual intercourse a major symbol so you need kind of an underlying system if you are not aware of that i don't think you'll interpret horse in a similar manner so you have a lot of horses in the literature if you are, if you want to know the sexual connotation associated with the horse you should be aware of that connotation that system or else you can't interpret so simply put that is the essence of structuralism they study the underlying structure of literary system or any system language or anthropology or semiotics so that is structuralism from structuralism you move to russian formalism can someone tell me one famous guy in russian formalism roman anyone russian formalism Jack roman jacobson roman jacobson Uh, go and check out j a k o b s o n roman r o m a n roman jacobson j a k o b s o n roman jacobson he came up with the term can someone tell me the term uh, he gave a term literary anyone anyone fill it up literariness literariness beauty literariness l i t e r a r a n e s s literariness that's a word given by roman jacobson russian formalist so russian formalism is based on sashur's structuralism or sashur didn't give the word structuralism but anyway that field so you have european structuralism then russian formalism the main figure is roman jacobson he said this is literature because it has literariness why how do you define a literary piece from a non literary text yeah why you enjoy reading this because it has some that literary quality whereas another piece of you know writing it doesn't have that quality and what gives this quality what are the features they study the form the form of or the forms of literature that's why it's called a russian formalism they focus on the intrinsic features associated with the form literary form especially the novel so structuralism is a more broader framework very broad they focus on all systems not only linguistics not only semiotics anthropology or folklore it's a very broad framework from that russian formalism you can narrow down to literary forms literary system from that you narrow down to new criticism new criticism is more american more american school of criticism here the focus is poetry the literary form they focused more they focused more on poetry and one example we have seen is emerson emerson william emerson belongs to this group new criticism and he focused on ambiguity how to analyze a poem through this one technique called ambiguity so by understanding ambiguity you can explore poetry so that is his contention so we finished up with one essay not the entire book seven types of ambiguity maybe we touched upon one first one and uh, the last one kind of a sandwich then we will discuss we will situate this writer in context so close reading new criticism is known for its close reading of poems or literary forms particularly poems what is close reading they look for 
you know its literary features like ambiguity irony paradox a symbol figures of speech or what else everything so this is a close reading and the, when you say close reading it's like a magnifying glass you look for deeper meanings read between the lines you explore a lot of meanings like uh, emson did in all his example whether in macbeth or in measure for measure or uh, keats melancholy or all the other poems the rest of the poems so it's a kind of a magnifying glass they read between the lines they explore meanings not one meaning there are a lot of meanings open to uh, interpretations so simply put the essence of new criticism it says art is autonomous so in order to interpret art you know we don't need historical backdrop history la theriyunu avashyam kedaadu literature padikka na adhukku poi history padikka you know that's one of the essence of new criticism new criticism enna solugudhu if you want to interpret a poem a piece of literature don't bother about when it was written adhu history theriyunuma thevai adha thevai number 2 don't bother about the biography of the author avaru eppa porandaru eppa setaru enga poi thevala vishayam you know that's not the concern if i want to interpret a piece of poem why should i bother about the author or the historical period in which the poem was written then readers respond eppadi vandu reader la respond panna idhukku munadi eppadi respond panna or how across ages readers responded to hamlet that's not the concern what means to you matters a lot this is the essence of new criticism number one they said art is autonomous autonomous abingarappo und self rule so literature is kind of a self ruled by literary aesthetics we did not bother about historical backdrop or biographical details or readers response so that is one essence and its method method it looks for organic unity the entire poem has to gel together and how it is done you have to study the literary features available there images symbols or ambiguity irony or paradox we will talk about irony and paradox later point of view and simply put new criticism is objective criticism what we do word on the page ungal appo thana on the screen you saw um, you know um, poetic lines you interpret those poetic lines based on the words and the connotation associated with it fine but emson doesn't follow all these rules emson is a different case exception when it comes to new criticism because he also discussed the historical period when it comes to shakespeare sonnet talking about the destruction of monastery or keats uh, death through conception tuberculosis so emson is an exception but generally new criticism they don't bother about historical background biographical details or reader response what matters a lot enna elidirukku poem kaiyila kuduthaachu adu irukkada badha padiyadha it's there it's given to you just uh, interpret the words depending on the context and the i mean context and the literary context um, the situation the literary context the literary situation of the poem not the historical context so this is the essence of new criticism you have to read it closely key figures number 1 you have john crow ransom so because of this famous essay criticism incorporation inc kind of an industry we are here to do interpretation kind of an agency like professor academy so you have criticism in corporation so john crow ransom so kind of a father figure then comes the most famous uh, one of the most famous figures uh, figure in the sense here is a personality you know i don't know what uh, ambiguity creeps into all my words so here key figure key figure refer to a key personality i a richards so you have i a richards famous concept the practical criticism what is practical criticism in a this is one of the famous method of reading when it comes to new criticism new criticism eppadi uh, vandu new and i am also very happy with this new criticism one of the most you know practical method of interpretation class la imply pannalam we are not psychoanalyst the mono sigmund freud kedaadu but we can be i richards practical criticism what is the method method of this criticism simple i richards says practical criticism word on the page approach you remove the title of the poem you remove the author of the poem you just have the word on the page you give this poem to your students you don't give them any background historical background or biographical details or readers interpretation ask them to interpret on their own definitely these students will come up with their own interpretations but they have to substantiate those meanings with the words available on the page 
and this method is very practical you just go to a class with a sheets of paper uh, 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 a short poem printed on that page distribute to your students ask them to interpret each one will come up with um, you know a meaning uh, and they will substantiate that meaning with the textual evidence textual words the words there on the phrases there so very practical method and this method was very popular even now even in in some universities when i entered a university there a professor came with a poem i think a butterfly if i remember uh, he he generally distributes that in the very first class we are actually terrified but that's his method of uh, teaching first class he introduced this ask your interpretation course on professor venkat raman in uh, madras university that's his one of his method actually he was practic practicing a new criticism he may not be aware of this method and this technical term but that's what he is doing is more practical professor venkat raman um this is practical criticism so here word on the page approach may students may come up with uh, you know literary terms and all the other things right and uh, this is practical criticism then ayer richards also is known for his uh, another famous book the meaning of meaning he wrote this with uh, ck ogden we will discuss ck ogden when it comes to a linguistics class but remember ck ogden associate him with ayer richards and this book we have a chapter on linguistics we will discuss ck ogden and ayer richards in linguistics in a different way but i'm just reminding of that then you have principles of literary criticism and ayer richards wants to like roman jacobs and literariness ayer richards introduced the term pseudo statement how do you differentiate literature from science science ko ilakiyo arivil ena difference he says science makes statements verifiable statements objective statements literature makes pseudo statements verify la panna mudiyadu depends you know depends uh, you can't say this is applicable to everywhere it will change accordingly variable so in literature we make pseudo statements not scientific statements and his most famous essay four kinds of meaning which is prescribed to you sense feeling tone intention we will discuss this uh, tomorrow uh, not today i'm just telling you sense feeling tone intention simple sense na enna arivu avladha meaning sense means what you say what you convey sense ne sollala sense illa adha meaning illa sense means meaning what you try to convey that is sense feeling the attitude towards what you say see so far i have been speaking uh, speaking for more than one hour if i am not passionate about you no know, if there's no passion in what i don't think you will feel the same feeling uh, you know what i feel towards what i'm speaking so i love this uh, especially talking about literature so there is a feeling towards what i talk kind of a passionate one uh, that's my field actually so sense what you convey that is sense meaning feeling refers to the attitude towards what you convey or what you say that is feeling or attitude irukona solrala or attitude irukona if i simply say this is more of a coaching class if i just in a kind of a dead tone uh, you know what four kinds of meaning uh, sense feeling tone intention if i move on that's not a coaching class uh, and there is no attitude towards what i'm saying uh, the moment i speak like a dead man like uh, i richards introduced four kinds of meaning sense feeling tone intention next slide then i don't think you'll come back so attitude is missing in the previous tone but here when i speak sense the meaning the feeling the feeling towards my feeling the speaker's feeling towards what or what he or she conveys tone refers to the tone towards the listener attitude towards the listener i respect you um, a professor should respect his or her students if you do not have respect for your students i don't think it's a failure the professor is a failure uh, all the time looking down upon students or uh, disparaging talking ill of students that's bad attitude uh, not fit for this uh, professorship so the tone refers to your attitude towards your listener then intention intention refers to the effect you want to achieve on the listener in effect at the end of this class i want you to understand uh, you should have understood this essay called the seventh type of ambiguity and another intention you should uh, most of you should pass uh, trb and get a job lead a good life fine maybe intention is to make clear things you know this uh, 
completing the essay and make you encourage you to read other essays on your own, not depending on me. So four kinds of meaning, sense, feeling, tone, intention. Sense, what you convey. Feeling, attitude towards what you convey. Tone, attitude towards the listener. Intention, the effect one decides to be achieved on the uh, listener. Okay, with this, we move on to the next one. We have another 15 minutes. Uh, I'll be with within time, don't worry. So, Cleanth Bruce, most discussed new critique. I mean, discussed, not disgusting, discussed. That's a pun involved. Anyway, uh, Cleanth Brooks. So most famous work, the well wrought urn. Can someone tell me what are the urns discussed? The title implies Cleanth Brooks, urn. Anyone? The well wrought urn. Two urns, two poems are implied. One is a metaphysical poem, one is a romantic poem. One is, can someone tell me? The Well Wrought Urn. So the title refers to two poems. One is by John Donne, one is by Keats. I'm just revealing. Anyone? Ode on a Grecian Urn. Ode on a Grecian Urn, Keats, and John Donne's canonization. So those are the two urns because canonization is all about. Uh, I told you one comparison, uh, lovers and saints, they should be preserved. Sa the ashes of the saints are preserved in an urn. Similar way, the poets and sorry, the lovers and their feelings are preserved in a sonnet or a poem uh, in poetry. So the, the form, the poetry, the poem canonization itself is an urn in which the lovers are canonized. So that's that's another interpretation of the poem, canonization. So you have urn. So urn refers to poetry, simply means. So you're not the physical urn. The urn here refers to canonization. The poem itself is the urn in which the um, ashes of um, the lovers are preserved or their feelings are preserved and they are invoked. Because that is another quality of saints. You invoke saints, you pray to them. Similar way, whenever you read this poem, you invoke the lovers. Oh, Julius, I mean, Romeo and Juliet, or um, you have uh, Mumtaz and Sajagan, you invoke them, lovers. So now they are saints. They do miracles. Their ashes are saved, preserved. They are also invoked. See, a lot of similarities. Anyway, uh, when it comes to Cleanth Brooks, you have the language of paradox. Most famous essay under new criticism. It simply says, language of poetry is language of paradox one of the most famous sentence in that essay. The language of poetry is language of paradox. Like Emson, Emson says, ambiguity is one of the characteristic features of poetry when it comes to interpretation of poetry. Similar way, a client book says, paradox is an essential feature when it comes to poetry. Also, when it comes to interpretation of poetry. Paradox is a kind of an um, uh, oxymoron. So, moron also means stupid. So, paradox refers to self-contradictory statement. Like ambiguity, it contradicts itself. So, it is connected with the seventh type of ambiguity. Paradox. In a, my famous example, uh, I always use this. Thank God I am an atheist. Thank God I am an atheist. This statement is it's a self-contradictory statement. It's a paradox. How can I thank God being an atheist? Actually, I'm not an atheist. I'm just giving an example. I'm more an agnostic. Uh, struggle. Struggle like this uh, Windhover, Hopkins. So the language of paradox is more of a... He says, you take any poem, uh, Cleanth Brooks says, you take any poem, there is a self-contradiction in any, any poem. It conveys one meaning, a poem conveys one meaning, that same poem conveys its opposite meaning or a contradictory meaning, like die and rise. Uh, I hope you will never forget that example in uh, John, uh, John Dunn's canonization. Why? Because uh, Cleanth Brook discusses the um, poem, the canonization in this essay, the language of paradox. So what I request you to do is, today you can read the poem canonization and parallelly read the language of paradox by Cleanth Brooks. Both are one and the same, right? So that is a piece of uh, poem. This is a piece of criticism. 
at the end of uh, the major part of the essay, Language of Paradox, is an analysis of uh, John Dunn's canonization. Okay. Then Heresy of Paraphrase, another famous essay. Uh, literature cannot be paraphrased. If you want to talk more about literature and its essence, you can't read, you know, you can't just simply paraphrase. Now, one meaning, a lot of interpretation. A paraphrase cannot do justice to a poem or interpretation of a poem or any uh, piece of literature. So that's actually a heresy, a religious connotation, uh, speaking ill of God. So that is a heresy of paraphrase. Then uh, the essay prescribed to you is irony as a principle of structure. What is irony? You say one thing, but you also mean the opposite thing, irony. For instance, sometimes I, if um, it happens, sometimes if a student cross talk and without my permission, if uh, a student intervenes and wants to show off uh, and terrify other students, I, I generally cut them off. I don't encourage students who wants to show off and uh, terrify you know, students who come from rural background or other students. Generally, I, I put them in their place, not directly, not through harsh words. I always known for using this uh, irony. I simply say beautiful explanation or something else. I remember this one famous example, uh, everyday example uh, in my UG. A student came to the front and the student introduced himself and he said, you know, I'm good at uh, cricket, volleyball, basketball and everything, um, you know, he just showed off uh, a literature student good at all sports. Very beautiful. Then the professor simply said, very beautiful. You are good at all the sports. Uh, you know, you know all the sports. Which one do you play well? And the moment he asked that question, which one do you play well? Well. So he used the statement in such a way, the student was stunned. He, he, he was made to realize, hey, seen put it together. Right? Introduce yourself politely, you know, show your good qualities. If you know, you know, the way you put it, if you know uh, how to play, you know, more games, like cricket, volleyball, put it in a simpler form. Uh, you know, you can pull a, a very respectful form. He, the tone, the tone he used towards the listener is irritating. So the professor simply uh, cut him off and said, um, I'm very happy that you play all the uh, sports, but which one do you play? Well, simple, cut off, irony, right? Okay, then other example, you know, other works by client Brooks, uh, more uh, co-written with uh, uh, Robert Penn Warren, you have Understanding Poetry. It's a collection, kind of an anthology and the methods how to interpret poetry. So if you want to be a professor of uh, literature, I think these three will do. Understanding poetry, understanding fiction, understanding drama, but it needs patience, it needs uh, uh, passion, or else you can't read this. It's a lot of, uh, um, uh, just to read these three books, uh, you will learn a lot of, a uh, lot about literature, a great deal about literature. Okay, we are moving from Glenbrook, we are on the verge of finishing, seven o'clock. So Alan Tate, this essay is again prescribed to you, tension in poetry. And uh, like Emson, Emson sticks with ambiguity, Client the Brook sticks with irony paradox. Alan Tate says, what is the beauty of a poem? A poem has a tension. What is a kind of a tussle or poor atomic? Kind of a struggle is there. The struggle between literary meaning and figurative meaning. And that struggle between literary meaning and figurative meaning is what gives the beauty of the poem. So that is the essence of this essay, tension in poetry. And he coins the word tension by cutting off the prefix X and in extension, intention. Extension refers to literal or denotative meaning, intention, figurative meaning. Okay, we are almost finishing off. Then two critics, Binsat and Beardsley, um, two famous essays, the intentional fallacy, affective fallacy, we already discussed. When you interpret poems, don't bother about the intention of the author. Don't bother about the intention of the author. Oh, author is not solely per. Yen the Vangayman and Traveler. What? Uthur Grangla worker. You read the poems, words on the page, that's enough. Is not author solely per. Author solely in the authority. People claim, some researchers claim, this is what John Dunn meant, you know. Hey, Nadala. Don't bother about the intention of the author. So if you do that, that is a fallacy, false assumption, you know, assumption. 
அப்படின்னு நினைச்சுக்கிறது அதான் ஆத்தர் தான் சொல்லியிருப்பாரு தேவையில்லாத விஷயம் Uh, what is given on the page you read that you interpret depending on the literary context or the context of the poem not the intention of the author that's a fallacy and affective fallacy ipudha undu ellarum enjoy panuvaanga enakku undu kabali pidikala enakku undu rajini padam you know there is a movie called kabali rajini when the movie came out there are mixed reaction uh, some praised rajini uh, oh my god kind of a comeback for uh, rajini kanth kabali and a new director ranjit what a beautiful movie i also watched on the 99th day uh, the next day is 100 i did in i hold uh, i held myself for 98 days i watched on 99th day it's a kind of a different experience people talk around me okay let them talk i watched on 99th day not the first day but this is a diff- different experience so some said the movie is a, uh, it's a flop some say it's a commercial mm-hmm. success even there are evidence it's a commercial success and mm-hmm. some say oh my god the movie is a rip off you know, based on bhasha bhasha mariyada irudha ba bhasha in, in the movie bhasha the classic movie he is a don this is a different don that's all it's a copy you know people talk if we are going for a new critic if you are a new critic don't bother about all things you analyze the movie how the movie opens or the intrinsic feature the themes discussed the portrayal of rajinikanth there or the character and there is no flashback that's the beauty of this uh, i mean short short and crisp not like a lengthy one but the flashback is there but used in a different way so you just go on and on and rajini is no longer a single man married has a daughter different one so don't bother about the response of the general audience you go on analyze the work the essence of the movie kabali so that is affective fallacy so do not bother about readers response that's a fallacy so we are coming to the end today so you have scrutiny i mean scrutinize like uh, magnifying with a magnifying glass you read between the lines scrutiny is actually a journal name of the journal uh, ran by f r lewis another critic i think english critic uh, uh, uh f r lewis known for his uh, famous uh, uh, book the great tradition so in that book great tradition he said when it comes to english literature at that point of time 1948 there are four major uh, writers jane aston george eliot henry james joseph conrad that's what he said this is the opening line from that book um first line the great novelists are jane aston george eliot henry james and joseph conrad then he said uh, i can't discuss jane aston in this book she needs separate volume so uh, fr lewis discusses only three writers uh, george eliot henry james and joseph conrad in his work uh, the great rich and another famous uh, critic a uh, new critic mark scorer technique as discovery you know again it uh, resonates that uh, theme of uh, new critics we finished off with uh, the second part so in the first part we discussed a particular essay i think this is my strategy i generally don't give an introduction then based on that introduction i don't uh, go for this uh, uh, new criticism i think i taught new criticism in a new criticism manner in the sense uh, you just attack the text first you read that that's what i did in the beginning ambiguity we discussed m sense ambiguity seventh type of ambiguity then i gave you actually the uh, the background uh that is uh, new criticism the school in which he belongs emerson so we are moving to the third part third part is simple what you have to read next you have to read in this class we finished two things i mean one one essay emerson's seven types of ambiguity your job now you have my editor version of that essay with you available online we shared with everyone just to tell you that this is quality so you just go and read the edited version full because this is a this is a lecture not the entire word for word analysis of the entire essay you can read that soon we will um, you get my notes if you join the course you will have the entire essay you can also if possible get the original text of uh, the text seven types of ambiguity or seventh type of ambiguity is downloadable the book is downloadable internet uh, so you can download the book and read the entire essay so that you can say goodbye to Uh, william emerson seven types of ambiguity then you can immediately read the three prescribed text number one i a richards 
four kinds of meaning. I also touched upon the, the crux of the essay today. Sense, feeling, tone, intention. That's not the major part of the essay though. Tomorrow we will discuss uh, four types of, uh, four kinds of meaning. So, but you know the crux of the essay, you can also read it on your own. Next, irony as a principle of structure, you know the essence. Why, like paradox, irony is very essential to interpret poems, especially in context, literary context. Then tension, again, I discussed the essence, the struggle or the tension between you know, literal and figurative meaning. So and this is the task today. So today, the rest of the day, if you have work or whatever it is, uh, whenever you get time, you have my uh, PDF with you, edited one. You can just go through these three essays, four kinds of meaning, irony as a principle of structure, tension in poetry, or no worries if you do not have time, if you are working. Tomorrow, we will try to finish off all the three essays or at least two of these. Um, uh, I think we'll try to finish off all the three essays tomorrow morning. Because uh, I.A. Richards and Alan Tate, it just takes, you know, irony takes some time. Brooks, we have to discuss in, it takes some time. But uh, Richards and Tate, we can finish off uh, very quick. So tomorrow's class, uh, most probably we will try to finish all these three essays so that by the end of tomorrow's lecture, we will have finished four essays uh, under uh, new criticism. And it's a, a good thing that, a, a good thing or bad thing in your, uh, you have 11 essays prescribed to you under uh, unit 10. Of the 11, five are new criticism, including T.S. Eliot. Sometimes the T.S. Eliot is brought under new criticism because he is known for his impersonal theory of art, right? So you have five essays, uh, T.S. Eliot's Metaphysical Poets, I.A. Richards, Four Kinds of Poetry, William Emerson, Seventh Type of Ambiguity, Cleanth Brooks, Irony as a Principle of Structure, Tate, Tension in Poetry. <coughs> Just a moment. <coughs> Sorry for the interpretation. Okay, fine. <clears throat> Interruption. Okay. So we are winding up with um, T.S. Eliot's The Metaphysical Poets. I'm, I'm not discussing this essay. Uh, again, this essay is prescribed, but this is uh, one of the crux. He discusses metaphysical poets. Even we discuss metaphysical poets today. John Dunn's uh, canonization. Then you have a Crasho and uh, Herbert. T.S. Eliot says, metaphysical, he admires metaphysical poets. Why? They are able to bend two things, one bit, knowledge, another feeling, both. They put it in such a way, they blend it in such a way, we enjoy the, that blending, that union. Uh, union has a different connotation here. So the union of thought and feeling. Then T.S. Late says, Elizabethan period. Then he says, Puritan age. Then neoclassical age. Puritan age, you have Milton. Then you have neoclassical uh, Dryden restoration age. He said, after this Elizabethan age, after this Mil I know what I saw, metaphysical poets, these guys, Milton and Dryden, they ruptured this blend. They collapsed this union. See, picture is done. Wow. Thought is different, feeling is different. So uh, T.S. Eliot says, during this time, a disassociation of sensibility set in, even under the Kaprama, I mean, Milton and Dryden, there's no, you know, natural blend of thought and feeling. Up and union, one full thought, in a full feeling. Dryden, Dryden is known for his, uh, can someone tell me what couplet? Dryden. Heroic couplet. Sir. Yes, heroic couplet. Up and Mari, like the Tamil poet, Thiruvallur, couplet, two line poem. Dryden. If you take Dryden's poem, he's known for the heroic couplet. In the sense, the thought should not go after these two lines. or thought. After these two lines, another thought, two lines. Another thought, two lines. It's like a structured one, very thoughtful, very mechanical. I mean, craft is more crafty. Dryden is more crafty. And Milton, more feeling, you know, a struggle like that poet. Right after he's, uh, he's gone blind. Okay, so with this we finish off the class. If you have any questions, you can ask. And there will be orientation for uh, four or five minutes by uh, Sarana Perma, the proprietor of uh, Professor Academy. 
So if you have any questions, you can ask, or he will speak for one or two minutes. So thank you for today's class, uh, for attending. Just wait, uh, he will um, let you know a few of the essential things of this academy and other things, if you want to join. Tomorrow's class, we will for, go for the three essays I mentioned. If you have any questions, you can ask now, or I can uh, ask Sarana Permal to speak. Any questions? I hope the uh, lecture is clear. No questions, sir. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Mr. Sarvana Pirmal, yes, you can uh, speak. I stop here. Thank you uh, for attending. Just wait, don't please leave. Um, you'll just want to share a few things. Yes, bless you, you can take over. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hello, hi. Um, this is Saravana. Bless you, ma'am. Slide uh, return. Okay, anyway, uh, class mode is relaxed. Okay, um, okay, so anyway, class number attends on a count. Okay, uh, anyway, uh, relax. I come just uh, relax. I come to Okay, just a uh, five minutes. Uh, course, a pretty poor home of the end of the matron. So, I'm going to first day. Can you go solve and dear? So, I'm going to pay. Okay, anyway, so in an you can in an ending either park. So, in an anga provide pono of the end of the car. Okay, well, um, anyway, for uh, uh, actually for uh, for details, already put the number put the number, so on the number contact panicla again. Uh, bless him, ma'am, uh, English department coordinate pandranga. Okay, so I'm load a contact number you can uh, you can get. I'm going to make a message panel on the number landa. that is again repeating 91505679884. I'm repeating 91505679884. Okay, for um, details, stay about dinner, you know, direct away contact for Nikla. Okay, and um, okay, so the eleventh morning, yeah, all days, mostly all days on the class. Okay, the main faculty was who most of the sessions on the Erikaporanga. Okay, starting days, long look uh, difficult to find Manala, who go on the best on our uh, form Kondruinga. Okay, Slaper, Slaper, different region on the Pinga, and all so the grand. Okay, and uh, evening mostly on the evening classes on the two education. Methodology and uh, GK classes are come. Education methodology and GK class are come. Uh, that is evening uh, particular time uh, around uh, uh, seven to eight. Mm -hmm. Under angle are come. Okay, so starting like the core paper mode start from. So next uh, uh, two weeks culture start from again okay, uh, GK and that. So uh, now number of strategy I've been solely number of that. And again uh, uh, education methodology and GK. Okay, so that's why I'm very strong and I'm best to put up on the line. That's why strategy are coming. One more mark is important. One more mark may result from a play on one more mark. Again, uh, 2019 first time a PGTR offer. Pano. So, upon the uh, professor academy actually on the UGC net, we are named for UGC net coaching. But 2019 first time on the PGTR BCA offer. Pano. So, the highest result percentage on the other no UGC net same team of faculty search. Uh, highest result of produce money. Other than the pre result at Sumona, uh, certificate verification on the two Adigamana pair on the two academy students on the two Irna Anga on the two. Okay, Matha Central Pass on the Archery Patralo here in the Chadimana result. So again, uh, this time we also, uh, we also, I am also, I am ensure, okay, and I will ensure that this, okay, and now <coughs> the bachelor aim, okay, Kandipa on the two, uh, Kandipa posting your home, certificate verification on the Nigerian, okay, uh, and now. Um, you said in the most best type one first day in his slipper giant mounting is almost a number strong as Okay, uh, results not only one side, okay, like not only it's support depends on the coaching center. And uh, so in a Mukema now, what I either partner of dinner first day, uh, you need a strong determination, okay, strong determination. You will come the fix money going as a slipper on the prepare panuing, but one the other Ungulka Ungulka real away in the TRB theva than our dinner or a cushion cake going than stronger, okay, real away. The Napri, you know, the preparation days, you know, the exam completed exam preparation days, you know, the Aramba Kalangal and Aramba waste Pana on the Nana. Um, self doubt, okay, Kandipa Mudima, and a repair particular person, you know, a major problem and now Dina language, there is English, okay, uh, English is a major issue. Aren't you? So, you know, the preparation days are starting on the Nagramba Bible on the Pangama or Changla or Kanga, um, so on the Marla Bible, so on the Marla Bible, but you know, the Kakinsta. Kandipa in the attempt to pass on Dina, okay, in an attaver, okay, in an preparation day slicery and past experience slicery. 
கண்டிப்பா பாஸ் பண்ணணும் இந்த வட்ட உறுதியா பாஸ் பண்ணணும் ஓகே உறுதியா தேவை அப்படின்னா அதுக்கு என்னென்ன பண்ணணும் த பெஸ்ட் எஃபர்ட் வாட் இஸ் த மேக்சிமம் எஃபர்ட் அப்படின்றது மேக்சிமா என்னால் என்ன பண்ண முடியுமோ அதை நான் பண்ணுவேன் அப்படின்றது என்னால மேக்சிமம் என்னால எவ்வளவு பண்ண முடியுமோ நான் அதை பண்ணுவேன் அப்படின்றது ஸோ எல்லா ஆஸ்பெக்ட்லயுமே ஆக்சுவலி சம்டைம்ஸ் வந்து ஹார்ட் ஒர்க் அலோ நாட் சஃபிஷியன்ட் அப்படின்ற மாதிரி இருக்கும் ஓகே ஹார்ட் ஒர்க் அலோ நாட் சஃபிஷியன்ட் அப்படின்ற மாதிரி இருக்கும் ஸோ அதனால உங்களுக்கு இங்க வந்துட்டு ஒரு யூ கோயிங் டு ஒர்க் பட் கரெக்டான டேரக்ஷன் வந்து என்ஷூர் பண்ணும் ஸோ தட் இஸ் தட் வில் என்ஷூர் தர் ரிசல்ட் கண்டிப்பா ஓகே நான் சொன்ன மாதிரி நான் இன்னைக்கு சொல்றேன் தட்ஸ் டே ஓகே ஸோ ஃபிஃப்த் மார்ச் இன்னைக்கு சொல்றதுதான் அதிகமான பேர் ஓகே பிஜேடிஆர்பியில அதிகமான பேர் வந்து ப்ரொஃபஸர் அகாடமியில தான் டிஆர்பி செலக்ட் ஆவாங்க என்ன ரீசன் அப்படின்னா Uh, we have strong faculty, best faculty. Okay, all of them actually source file. And the syllabus level, all source file may collect money. No. Material preparation, that is our content. So best material, you will get best of it. Okay, that is all. Actually, question is, that is all. 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 Okay, so uh, best source, that is best of pressure on the faculty. Best, okay, so best effort. Our team of faculty is done. The material preparation, all our test series, all that come out. Okay, uh, again. டெஸ்ட் சீரிஸ் ரொம்ப ஸ்டாண்டர்டான டெஸ்ட் சீரிஸ் இருக்கும் அகைன் ஜிகே அண்ட் எஜுகேஷன் மெத்தாலஜி ரொம்ப பெஸ்ட்டாகவே இருக்கும் ஸோ பெஸ்ட் லெக்சர் ஓகே ரிசல்ட்டுக்கு என்னென்ன தேவையோ ஸோ எல்லாமே வந்துட்டு ப்ரெசென்ட் பண்ணுறோம் அண்ட் ஆக்சுவலி பிஃபோர் கொரோனா வந்துட்டு நாங்கள் ஆன்லைன் கிளாஸ் ரூம் தான் பண்ணியிருந்தோம் ஆன்லைனில் வந்துட்டு எனக்கு ஒரு டவுட் கண்டிப்பாக எனக்கு பர்சனலி ஆன்லைன் வந்து பிடிக்கல கிளாஸ் ரூம் தான் பண்ணணும் கிளாஸ் ரூம் தான் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னு நான் சொல்லுவேன் பட் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி வந்து எனக்கு டிசம்பர் வரைக்கும் ரொம்ப ஒஸ்டியராக இருந்துச்சு பட் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டி டிசம்பர் ஃபஸ்ட் வந்து ரிசல்ட் டேட் யூஜிசி நெட் ரிசல்ட் டேட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் வந்துட்டு ஹையஸ்ட் ரிசல்ட் இதுக்கு முன்னாடி பண்ணாத ஒரு ரிசல்ட் ஒரு அச்சீவ்மெண்ட் வந்து டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டில வந்து பண்ண அந்த ஒரு டே அந்த ஒரு நாள் நாள் எனக்கு அந்த இயர் வந்து ரொம்ப கிரேட் இயர் ஆயிடுச்சு ஒரு ஃபேக்கல்ட்டி ஒரு பர்சன் ஒரு டீச்சரா ஒரு பெரிய சாட்டிஸ்ஃபேக்ஷன் வந்து அந்த டேல தான் கிடைச்சிச்சு என்ன ரீசன் அப்படின்னா யூஸ்வலி வந்து ஒரு எயிட்டி ஹையஸ்ட் ரிசல்ட் பர்சன்டேஜ் ப்ரொஃபஸர் அகாடமி ஹையஸ்ட் ரிசல்ட் பர்சன்டேஜ் இங்கிலீஷ் பர்டிகுலர்லி இன் டூ தௌசண்ட் சிக்ஸ்டீன்ல இருந்து அந்த மெயின்டைன் பண்ணிட்டு இருக்கும் அதிகமான நம்பர் யூஜிசி நெட்ல அதிகமான நம்பர்ஸ் ஜேஆர்எஃப் ப்ரொடியூஸ் பண்ணிருக்கோம் பட் டுவெண்ட்டி டுவெண்ட்டில என்னாச்சு அப்படின்னா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கொரோனான்றனால தான் ஆன்லைனில் வந்தோம் பட் வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் யூஸ்வலி வந்துட்டு பத்து பேர் எழுதுறாங்க எட்டு பேர் பாஸ் பண்ணுவாங்க ஏழு பேர் பாஸ் பண்ணுவாங்க ஒன்பது பேர் பாஸ் பண்ணுவோம் அந்த ரேஞ்ச் தான் இருக்கும் பட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைமே வந்துட்டு ஒரு ஹண்ட்ரட் பர்சன்டேஜ் ஓகே தட் இஸ் ஸோ ஒரு லிஸ்ட் போட்டு இவங்க எல்லாம் பாஸ் பண்ணுவோம் அப்படின்னா எல்லாருமே பாஸ் பண்ணிருந்தாங்க ஸோ அது ஒரு மிராக்கல் ஆச்சு அதுவும் எனக்கு ஒரு பர்சனலாக எனக்கு ஒரு செல்ஃப் சாட்டிஸ்ஃபைடான ஒரு ஆஸ்பெக்ட் ஸோ அது வந்து எப்படி அச்சீவ் பண்ணோம் அப்படின்னா ஆக்சுவலி ஒரு இண்டிவிஜுவலான ஒரு அட்டென்ஷன் தான் அண்ட் ஆன்லைன் கிளாஸ்ல தான் அதை அச்சீவ் பண்ணுவோம் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டைம் ஓகே என்ன ரீசன் அப்படின்னா டெய்லி கிளாஸஸ் இருந்துச்சு ஆன்லைன் பொறுத்தவரை டெய்லி கிளாஸஸ் இருந்துச்சு அண்ட் அகைன் அட்வான்டேஜஸ் வந்துட்டு ரெக்கார்டர் செஷன் த்ரூ மொபைல் ஆப் ஏன்னா ஒரு செகண்ட் டைம் நீங்கள் பார்த்துக்கலாம் செகண்ட் டைம் பார்க்கலாம் தேர்ட் டைம் பார்க்கலாம் சில பேருக்கு வந்து அந்த மாதிரி தேவைப்படும் சில பேருக்கு தேவைப்படும் சில பேர் ஒரு டைம் போதுமானது சில பேருக்கு சில பேருக்கு நெட்ஒர்க் இஷ்யூவாக இருக்கும் பட் எனிவே ஸோ அந்த ஆப் டெக்னாலஜி வந்து ரொம்ப ஹெல்ப்ஃபுல்லாக இருந்துச்சு அதே மாதிரி ஆன்லைன் இப்போ யூடியூப் கிளாஸ் அப்படின்னா நம்ம இன்ட்ராக்ட் பண்ண முடியாது பட் இந்த பிளாட்ஃபார்ம் பொறுத்தவரை டெக்னாலஜி வந்து நம்மளுக்கு வந்து அந்த கிளாஸ் ரூம் ஆன்லைன் கேப்பை வந்து கொஞ்சம் குறைக்குது டெஃபினெட்லி அது ஒரு பெரிய ரோல் பிளே பண்ணுச்சு ஸோ எனிவே ஸோ அந்த ரிசல்ட்ன்றதுனால தான் ஸ்ட்ராங்காக அதிகமான ஒரு ஒரு பெரிய ஃபார்ம்ல இருக்கேன்னு சொல்லலாம் ஓகே ஏன்னா அதிகமான நான் நினைச்சதா பண்ற ஒன்று ஓகே தட் இஸ் ஹையஸ்ட் ஓகே அது ஒரு பெரிய அச்சீவ்மெண்ட்டா எனி அந்த அளவுக்கு ஒரு ஒரு ரிசல்ட் வந்து ப்ரொடியூஸ் பண்ணியிருந்தோம் ஆன்லைன்ல தான் பண்ணியிருந்தோம் அண்ட் டீம் ஆஃப் ஃபேக்கல்டிஸ் அவர் பெஸ்ட் அண்ட் ரிசல்ட் தேவையான எல்லா கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக்ஸ் எல்லாமே இருக்கும் பட் அதே மாதிரி நான் உங்ககிட்ட எதிர்பார்க்கறது என்னன்னா அந்த சக்சஸ்ஃபுல் பீப்பிளோட குவாலிட்டிஸ் வந்து ஸ்டார்டிங் டேஸ்ல இன்ஷூர் பண்ணிக்கோங்க வெறும் இந்த இந்த ப்ரிப்பரேஷனோட ஸ்டார்டிங் டேஸ்ல எடுத்துறப்பே நீங்க புக்க உட்காந்து படிங்க அப்படின்னு சொல்ல மாட்டேன் ஓகேங்களா எடுத்த போய் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டேவே நீங்க ரீட் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்றது கூட நெசசிட்டி கிடையாது சில பேருக்கு ஓகே சில பேர் நல்லா ஆல்ரெடி சில படிக்கிறதுக்கு சில குவாலிட்டிஸ் வச்சிருப்பீங்க பட் லைக் மீ என்னை மாதிரி சில பீப்புள் ஓகே என்னை மாதிரி அப்படின்னா எனக்கு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ப்ராப்ளம் என்னுடைய வில்லன் அப்படின்றதே வந்துட்டு இங்கிலீஷ் தான் லாங்குவேஜ் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஓகே எனக்கு படிச்ச புரியாது ஃபர்ஸ்ட் எடுத்தோட ம
கண்டிப்பா பாஸ் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னா டெஃபினெட்லி யூ நீட் டு டூ ஸ்மார்ட் ஒர்க் டெஃபினெட்லி ஓகே ஸ்மார்ட் ஒர்க்னா தப்பான ஒரு ஒர்க் ஹார்ட் ஒர்க் வந்து பண்ணக்கூடாது ஓகே அதிக தேவையில்லாம் அதிகமான எஃபர்ட் தேவையில்லாம டைரக்ஷன்ல போடக்கூடாது ஸோ அதனால ஒன்று அதே மாதிரி அதிக நேரம் படிச்சா இங்கிலீஷ் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் பண்ற ஒரு மேஜர் மிஸ்டேக் அதிக நேரம் உட்காந்து படிச்சா நிறைய படிச்சிடலாம் அப்படின்ற ஒரு இது அது கிடையாது ஓகே ஸோ யூனிட் டு பி வெரி ஆக்டிவ் வெரி ஷார்ட் டைம்ல கொஞ்சம் நேரம் படிச்சாலும் போது ஆக்டிவாக படிக்கணும் அப்படின்னா ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஃபர்ஸ்ட் டே நான் உங்களுக்கு கொஷின் பண்றேன் ஓகே திஸ் இஸ் த டாஸ்க் ஆக்டிவா இருக்கிறதுக்கு என்னென்ன பண்ண முடியுமோ அதை நீங்கள் பண்ணணும் இதுதான் டாஸ்க் ஓகே ஏன்னா ஷார்ட் டைம் படிச்சா போதும் கான்சன்ட்ரேஷன் மெமரி இதெல்லாம் வந்துட்டு நம்ம இன்க்ரீஸ் பண்ணி ஆகணும் ஓகே ஸோ அதுக்கு தான் வந்துட்டு பண்ணணும் அண்ட் அதே மாதிரி சில குவாலிட்டிஸ் வந்து கற்றுக்கணும் ஓகே ஸோ என்னோட ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் டேஸ்ல ஸ்டார்டிங் டேஸ்ல பண்ண மிஸ்டேக் பாதி நாள் வேஸ்ட் பண்ணது செல்ஃப் டவுட்டிங்னால செல்ஃப் டவுட்னா என்னென்னே கண்டிப்பாக பாஸ் பண்ணிருவா உண்மையிலே பாஸ் பண்ணிருவா இன்னொன்று வந்து கண்டிப்பாக எடுத்தாங்க 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 சொல்லிட்டு பதறக்கூடாது ஓகே ஸோ தட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ இஷ்யூ ஓ என்னன்னா நீங்கள் பெரிய அச்சீவ்மெண்ட் அப்படின்னா லைக் ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் டேஸ்ல பெரிய அச்சீவ்மெண்ட் ஹாப்பியாக இருக்கிறது தான் ஓகே வாட் வி லேர்ன் வித் பிளஷர் வி நெவர் பர்கட் ஓகே யூஜிசி ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் பிளான் தான் திங் ஓகே வாட் வி லேர்ன் வித் பிளஷர் வி நெவர் பர்கட் ஓகே நம்ம வந்து ஹாப்பியாக லேர்ன் பண்ணணும் மறக்க மாட்டோம் அப்படின்றது ஸோ அது அதை வந்து நீங்கள் இன்ஷூர் பண்ணி ப்ரிப்ரேஷன் டேஸ் வந்து நேச்சுரலி காம்படேட்டிவ் எக்ஸாம் அங்கே ஒரு ரிசர்ச் அதாவது அந்த நம்ம டீச்சிங் அப்டேட் அந்த இதில் படிச்சு சைக்காலஜிலாம் படிச்சிருக்கோம் லேர்னர்ஸ் கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக்ஸ் ஓகே அடல்ட் லேர்னர்ஸ் கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக்ஸ் இன் காம்படேட்டிவ் எக்ஸாமினேஷன் ஸோ காம்படேட்டிவ் எக்ஸாம்ஸ்க்கு அடல்ட் லேர்னர் ஸோ என்னன்னா நேச்சுரலி ஸ்ட்ரெஸ்ஸாக இருப்பாங்க ஓகே ஸோ நிறைய ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் நிறைய ஃபேக்டர்ஸ் அதில் ஒரு ஒரு ஃபேக்டராக அட்ரஸ் பண்ணுவோம் ஓகே எல்லா அந்த கோர் ஸ்ட்ரக்சர் அந்த மாதிரி தான் இருக்கும் ஓகே ஸோ என்னன்னா இந்த ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் இல்லாம படிச்சீங்கன்னா தான் பெஸ்டா படிக்க முடியும் ஓகே ஸோ அதனால ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்டார்டிங்ல சில குவாலிட்டி இன்ஷூட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க தட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ டைம் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் டேஸ்லயும் சரி அண்ட் எக்ஸாம் சென்டர்லயும் சரி இந்த டைம் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் என்ன அப்படின்னா நீங்க வந்து டெய்லி வந்துட்டு நீங்க எந்த ஒர்க் படிச்சாலும் சரி எதை பண்ணாலும் சரி ஷெடியூல்ல இருந்து இருக்கணும் நீங்க அதாவது புதுசா தான் படிக்கக்கூடாது அப்படி புதுசா படிக்கணும்னு நினைச்சீங்கனாலும் அதை ஷெடியூல் பண்ணிட்டு அப்புறமேட் படிக்கணும் என்ன படிக்கிறோம் என்ன பண்ண என்ன வேலை பார்த்தாலும் உங்களுக்கு ஷெடியூல்ல நீங்க அதாவது ஒரு நோட் பேட் வச்சிருக்கீங்க இன்னைக்கு என்னென்ன பண்ண போறோம்னு எழுதி வச்சுக்கோங்க அது சின்ன சின்ன டாஸ்க் வைங்க இப்ப நான் வந்து நான் படிக்கும் போது ஒரு டாபிக் ஒரு ஒரு பத்து பக்கம் படிக்கணும்னு நினைப்பேன் சம்டைம்ஸ் வந்து ஒரு நாளைக்கு ஒரு பக்கம் தான் படிக்க முடியும் அது கூட நான் ஒரு ஒரு பேராகிராஃபாக கூட கட் பண்ணி வச்சுக்கிறேன் சின்ன சின்னதாக கட் பண்ணி வச்சுக்கோங்க அதே படிக்கிற பிளேஸை வந்து ஃபர்ஸ்ட் கிளியராக அரேஞ்ச் பண்ணி வச்சுக்கோங்க என்வரான்மெண்ட் செட் பண்ணணும் என்வரான்மெண்ட்னா நீங்கள் படிக்கிற ரூம் நல்லா செட் பண்ணணும் ஓகே அண்ட் புக்ஸ் மெட்டீரியல் வந்து உங்கள் அகடமிலேருந்தே கொடுத்துருவோம் அதனால இஷ்யூ இல்லை ஓகே அது அது சஃபிஷியன் டெஃபினெட்லி அது சஃபிஷியன் அது படிக்கிறதுக்கு உங்களுக்கு கரெக்டாக இருக்கும் இந்த டைம் நான் அதிகமான கண்டென்ட் ஏன் பாஸ் பண்ணுறோன்னா அந்த அளவுக்கு நிறைய படிச்சிருக்க போகிறோம் ஓகே இந்த லாஸ்ட் டைம்ல வந்துட்டு ரிசல்ட் ப்ரொடியூஸ் பண்ணுக்கு அதாவது இந்த குவாலிட்டி அப்படின்னு நான் நம்புறது அதிகமான கண்டென்ட்டை பெஸ்டாக கொடுக்குறது ரொம்ப எளிமையான முறையில் வந்துட்டு முறையில் வந்து ஃபேக்கல்ட்டிஸ் வந்து கொடுப்பாங்க அதுதான் ஒரு இது பட் ஸ்டார்டிங் டேஸ்ல நீங்கள் உங்களுக்கு மேபி சில பேருக்கு வந்துட்டு ஃபர்ஸ்ட் காலையில் எந்திரிக்கிறது அந்த டைம்ல இப்போ சில பேர் உட்காந்துட்டு இருக்கீங்க கிளாஸ் முடிஞ்சிட்டு நிறைய எனவே தேங்க் தேங்க் யூ ஃபார் எனிவே காலையில் எந்திரிச்சிருக்கீங்க இவ்வளோ பேர் ஓகே ஸோ தட் இஸ் ஆல்சோ ஃபைன் எனிவே ஸோ உங்களோட ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்டெப் டெஃபினெட்லி நீங்கள் ஆல்ரெடி ஃபர்ஸ்ட் ஸ்டெப் வந்து வச்சுட்டீங்க ஓகே டுவர்ட்ஸ் ஒரு ரிசல்ட் ஓகே அதே மாதிரி ஸ்ட்ராங்காக இன்ஷூர் பண்ணிக்கோங்க கான்ஃபிடென்ட்டாக இன்ஷூர் பண்ணிக்கோங்க செல்ஃப் டவுட் இருக்கக்கூடாது டைம் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட்டில் வந்து பெஸ்ட்டாக இருக்கணும் எதை பண்ணாலுமே லிஸ்ட் அவுட் பண்ணிட்டு அதாவது உங்களோட நோட் பேலில் உங்களோட இதில் வந்து இன்னைக்கு என்னென்ன படிக்க போகிறோம் எல்லாத்தையும் லிஸ்ட் அவுட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க பூஸ் எதாவது படிக்கணும் கூட அதை நீங்கள் ஆட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க சின்ன சின்னதாக ஒன்று ஒன்று நீங்கள் சின்ன சின்ன ஆஸ்பெக்டாக முடிக்க ஆரம்பிங்க ஓகே அகைன் ஆக்டிவாக படிக்கிறதுக்கான டைம் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட்டுக்கு அக்கடமியில் இருந்து சின்ன சின்ன டாஸ்க் யூஜிசி நட்டுக்கெல்லாம் கொடுப்போம் ஆக்சுவலாக ஆக்டிவாக இருக்கணும் அப்படின்னா ஹார்ட் ஒர்க் ஹலோ நாட் சஃபிஷியன்ட் ஓகே சில பேர்லாம் ஹார்ட் ஒர்க் பண்ணிப்பாங்க கரெக்ட் இங்கே வந்து சயின்டிஃபிக் வே தான் ஓகே த பெஸ்ட்டாக பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னா அதுக்கு என்ன பண்ணணும் அப்படின்றது தான் ஓகே த நான் என்னோட ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் டேஸில் நான் என்னோட பண்ணது நான் என்னோட அப்ரோச் வந்து நான் அவ்வளோ பேருக்கு நான் சஜஸ்ட் பண்ண கிடையாது அது சில ஒரு பட் பர்டிகுலரான ஒரு ஏன்னா எனக்கு தெரிஞ்சு நான் பெஸ்ட்டாக பண்ணணும் அப்படின்றது தான் ஓகே நான்
ஓகே நான் ஜிகே கிளாஸ் வந்து நான் ஒரு பார்ட் வந்து நான் எடுப்பேன் ஓகே ஸோ அதில் வந்து உங்களுக்கு சில ஆஸ்பெக்ட் வந்து ஷேர் பண்ணுறேன் பட் இப்போதைக்கு வந்துட்டு ஃபஸ்ட் டே யூஜிஸ் நெட் ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் வந்து சிலர் வந்து சில டாஸ்க் மட்டும் கொடுப்போம் ஓகே டைம் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட்டுக்காக அதில் ஒன்று ஃபஸ்ட்டு வந்து என்னென்னா அந்த அந்த ஸ்ப்ரவுட்ஸ் முளைக்கட்டிய தானியம் அதை ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணுறது ஓகே அது வந்துட்டு எப்படி ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணுறதுன்னு யூ கேன் ஃபைன் முளைக்கட்டிய தானியம் லைட்டாக முளைச்சிருக்கணும் அந்த பயிரை ஊற வச்சு பயிரை ஊற வச்சு என்ன பண்ணணும்னு தெரியும் நினைக்கிறேன் ஸோ யூ கேன் ஃபைண்ட் இன் யூடியூப்ல பார்க்கலாம் எப்படி பண்றதுன்னு பட் ஏன்னா அதில் ஒரு டைம் மேனேஜ்மெண்ட் இருக்கு அதாவது நீங்க நாலு கட்சிக்கு நீங்க சாப்பிடணும் அப்படின்னா முளைக்கட்டி அதாவது முளைக்கட்டிய தானியம் ஓகே ஃப்ரௌட்ஸ் ஃப்ரௌட்ஸ் தான் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணணும் சில சில பேர் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணி ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணா போதுமான சில பேர் கேட்டிருந்தாங்க லாஸ்ட் டைம் ஒரு பயங்கரமான கொஷின் ஆஃப் த இயர் அப்படின்ற மாதிரி ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணி என்ன பண்ணும் அப்படின்னா ஓகே ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணி அதை சாப்பிட்றதுக்காக தான் ஓகே ஸ்ப்ரௌட்ஸ் ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் லைட்டா முளைச்சிருந்தா போதும் ஸோ நாலு கட்சி நீங்க சாப்பிடணும் அப்படின்னா நீங்க இன்னைக்கே ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணணும் ஓகே ஸோ ஒன் வீக் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணிட்டு அதை நீங்க போட்டோ வந்து ஷேர் பண்ணணும் ஓகே அகாடமி ஆல்ரெடி ஜாயின் பண்ண ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ்க்கு நான் இது சொல்றேன் கண்டிப்பா வந்து யூனிட் டூ ஓகே அண்ட் அகைன் ஆன்லைன்ல வந்து அகைன் ஆன்லைன்லயுமே இண்டிவிஜுவல் அட்டென்ஷன் வந்து இருக்கும் யார் யார் என்ன பண்ணிக்கிட்டு இருக்கீங்க ரெக்கார்ட் மெயின்டைன் பண்ணுவோம் டெஸ்ட் எல்லாமே மெயின்டைன் பண்ணுவோம் அண்ட் ஒரு டைத்தில் ஒருத்தவங்களுக்கு அட்வைஸ் கொடுப்போம் டெஸ்ட் முடிச்ச பின்னாடி வந்துட்டு ஒரு அட்வைஸ் இருக்கும் என்னென்ன பண்ணலாம் அப்படின்றதுக்கு ஓகே அதே மாதிரி டெஸ்ட் வந்து சில பேருக்கு ஏற்ற மாதிரி டெஸ்ட் ஷெடியூல் வந்து மாற்றி தருவோம் ஓகே சில பேர் ஸ்லோவாக இருப்பீங்க சில பேர் ஃபாஸ்ட்டாக இருப்பீங்க அதுக்கேற்ற மாதிரி மாற்றி தருவோம் ஓகே டுவர்ட்ஸ் பெஸ்ட் ரிசல்ட் ஓகே அதே மாதிரி இந்த கிளாஸ் வந்து எப்படி இருக்குன்னா ஆல்ரெடி பேசிக் கண்டென்ட் தெரிஞ்சவங்க தான் வரணும் அப்படின்ட்டு கிடையாது பேசிக்ஸ்ல இருந்தா இருக்கும் ஓகே ஆனால் வந்துட்டு நீங்கள் வந்து உங்களோட நீ ஃபேக்கல்டிஸ் வந்து கர நீங்கள் கம்யூனிகேட் பண்ணலாம் ஓகே தனியாக ஓகே ஸோ பிளஸ்ஸிங் நம்பர் இருக்குன்னா நீங்கள் அவங்க சொன்னீங்கன்னா அவங்க தனியாக வந்து அரேஞ்ச் பண்ணி தருவாங்க என்ன என்னென்ன பண்ண முடியும் அப்படின்றது மெயின் ஸ்ட்ரீம் தவிர்த்து மெயின் கிளாஸஸ் தவிர்த்து உங்களுக்கு சில இதெல்லாம் வந்து தனித்தனியாக இருக்கும் ஓகே எனிவே சார் ஓகே ஸோ ஃபஸ்ட்டு டாஸ்க் வந்து ப்ரௌட்ஸ் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணணும் அப்படின்றது ஐ ஹோப் எல்லாத்துக்கும் தெரியும் நினைக்கிறேன் சில பேர் ஆல்ரெடி பண்ணிக்கிட்டு இருப்பீங்க அகைன் செகண்ட் ஒன் வந்து என்னன்னா டென் மினிட்ஸ் யோகா அல்லது எக்ஸசைஸ் காம்படிட்டிவ் எக்ஸாம் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணுறீங்க அப்படின்னா யூ நீட் டு டூ திஸ் ஓகே டென் மினிட்ஸ் யோகா அல்லது எக்ஸசைஸ் ஆர் வாக்கிங் டென் மினிட்ஸ் யூ நீட் டூ ஓகே அந்த டைம்ல என்னன்னா இப்போ சப்போஸ் வாக் பண்ணுறீங்க அப்படின்னா யூ நீட் டு செல்ஃப் மோட்டிவேஷன் ஓகே அதாவது நம்ம மோட்டிவேஷன் வந்து அவுட் சைடு வந்து எதிர்பார்க்க முடியாது ஓகே செல்ஃப் மோட்டிவேஷன் இப்போ நான்லாம் வந்து நான் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணும்போது ஒரு ஒரு வேர்டு நான் ப்ரப்போஸ் பண்ணுவது விர்ச்சுவல் மோட்டிவேஷன் அப்படி இல்லாத ஒன்றே நான் மோட்டிவேஷனாக வச்சுக்கிறேன் ஏன்னா நான் கண்டிப்பாக பாஸ் ஆயிடுவேன்ற ஒரு எந்த தகுதியுமே இல்லாமல் இருந்தேன் நான் ஓகே ஆனால் ஃபஸ்ட்டும் பாஸ் பண்ணேன் ஸோ அதனால் நான் என்ன நம்ம நீ கண்டிப்பாக ட்ரை பண்ண அப்படின்னு ஆக்சுவலாக பேசிக்லி ஃப்ரம் அத்லட்டிக்ஸ் அத்லட்டிக்ஸ் இன் காலேஜ் டேஸ் ஸோ அதுல இருந்து ஒரு கற்றுக்கிட்ட ஒரு கேரக்டர் ஓகே அத்லட்டிக்ஸ்ல ஒரு பத்து பேர் இருபது பேர் ஓடினாலும் அந்த கடைசியாக ஓடுறவங்க கூட பார்த்தீங்கன்னா அவங்க வந்து மேக்ஸிமமாக ட்ரை பண்ணியிருப்பாங்க ஓகே இதை மேக்ஸிமமாக ட்ரை பண்ணியிருப்பாங்க ஸோ ஸோ என்னன்னா கடைசியாக ஓடினாலும் பரவாயில்ல அதே மாதிரி அந்த ஒரு ட்ராக் அந்த லைன் இருக்கும் ஃபினிஷிங் லைன் இருக்கும்ல கடைசியாக ஓடி கீழே விழுந்துட்டா கூட ஓகே ஏதாவது நடந்துட்டா கூட அந்த லைனை போய் தொட்டுட்டு அப்புறமே தான் அந்த ஃபீல்டு விட்டு வெளியே வருவோம் ஓகே அது வந்து ஒரு கல்ச்சராகவே இருக்கும் அது ஒரு பாலிசி அதனால ஸோ நீங்கள் இந்த எக்ஸாமுக்கு வந்துட்டீங்க அப்படின்னாலே தெரியும் ஓகே ஒரு அதாவது ஒரு ஒரு இதை நீங்கள் எய்ம் பண்ணுறீங்க அப்படின்னா எய்ம் பண்ணிவிட்டு அதுக்கு ஒர்க் பண்ணலாம் அப்படின்னா தப்பு அந்த ஒர்க் பண்ணுறீங்க இப்போ நீங்கள் எல்லாம் ஆல்மோஸ்ட் பண்ணிக்கிட்டு தான் இருப்பீங்க ஆனால் அதுவே நீங்கள் பெஸ்ட்டாக பண்ணலாட்டினாலும் தப்பு தான் ஏன்னா அது ஒரு ரிசல்ட் தராது ஸோ யூ நீட் டு டூ பெஸ்ட்டு ஓகே அத்லட்டிக்ஸில் ஒரு சின்ன ஒரு கேரக்டரிஸ்டிக் என்னன்னா கடைசி ஓடுறவங்க கூட அவங்களுக்கு தெரிஞ்சு அவங்களோட மேக்ஸிமம் தான் ஓடிக்கிட்டு இருப்பாங்க அவங்க மேக்ஸிமம் ட்ரை பண்ணி தான் தோப்பாங்க ஓகே கடைசி ஓடுறவங்க கூட மேக்ஸிமம் ட்ரை பண்ணிட்டு தான் தோப்பாங்க ஸோ ஸோ அந்த இது நான் கற்றுக்கிட்டேன் நான் அங்கே கற்றுக்கிட்ட ஒரு குவாலிட்டி நான் வந்து என்னோட எக்ஸாம்பிள் வந்து நான் ட்ரை பண்ணேன் என்னோட ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் டேஸில் வந்து ட்ரை பண்ணேன் ஏன்னா எனக்கு மற்ற குவாலிட்டிஸ்லாம் கிடையாது பட் எனக்கு வந்து கண்டினியூஸாக ட்ரை பண்ண மட்டும் தான் தெரியும் ஓகே அந்த கண்டினியூஸாக ட்ரை பண்ணும்போது தான் So, I need to do something differently. Additional, I have to do okay, additional. Okay, additional, I have to do that. But I have to do that basically. First, I have to do that average student. Then, I have to do that. First, I have to do that. First, I have to do that.
okay there are many qualities okay uh, vidamichi uh, long distance runners so there are characters but first starting days la ungala first solradhu first determination ungala mudiyundra strong ah nanninga self doubt pannadhinga okay evlo ostra venna adhu ungala therisu or past okay now you going to ready to work okay na ungala edhir paakradhu willingness to work okay otherwise matha matha ellame support pannuva hmm so okay so next first vandu sports prepare pannu sonna and yoga 10 minutes panna sollinga so next enna solrana uh diet chart vandu prepare pannunga actually we need to be very active right hard work pannu appadina well planned ah pannu miss eya koodadu okay so appo na enna pannu appadina um sprouts vandu prepare pannu prepare pannu solrena again diet chart diet chart appadindrathu ungalku theriyum edha saapalla edhu healthy edhu healthy illa nu okay neengale ready pannikonga ungalku four months kuriya health or diet idhala nama like indha keera satta nalladhu appdi solluvanga weekly idha add pannikonga indha oily foods avoid pannu so you need to do you need to prepare and send it to me okay neenga prepare pannu prepare pannu mattum illa adha neenga send pannu adha follow pannu okay for four months best result for the best result okay and you need and again uh, so idu or task uh, uh, again idu vandu third one again enna uh, final ah onna enna na sorry uh, fourth one uh, you need to be very water, uh, water conscious or water conscious in the term or particular break la vandu water thanni vandu eduthukonu okay actually ena reason appadina neenga vandu ipo summer la varum active ah irukonu nanachu indha padikiran nu solla thanni kudikama padikira appadina best kedaidu okay mind vandu body indha brain irukla brain oda idai therinju vechukonu konjam okay so adanalu vandu water vandu konjam consume pannikonga okay correct ana break la vandu irukonu adha adha vandu or systematic manner la vandu ensure pannu okay correct avlo 3 liter water vandu na kuduthiruken particular 1 hour once vandu na water or or tumbler vandu consume pannirken abindra vandu neenga ensure pannu indha preparation days la i expect you to okay so actually in the teaching field matha field vandu enna different appadina you are role model okay in role model appadina nal valkai okay eppadi valradhu appindra adha mukkiyamana thonu na propose pannadhu na edirpaagradhu onnu strong teachers okay strong teacher appadina and physically strong okay like uh, healthy ah irukravanga kuda okay the health problem again ellarkume varum el manushan na appadina health problem varatha seiyum but we need to be the health conscious persons okay teachers appadina health conscious ah irupanga mathavanga matha sector la irukavanga ellarkume health problem irukatha seiyum health problem manidhan na irukatha seiyum but health conscious na uh, conscious ah irukiradhu okay and the or aspect vandu teachers ku la or ithana or character and you are the role model so i expect you to do okay um okay uh, சரி ஓகே ஸோ நெக்ஸ்ட் ஒன் லாஸ்ட் ஒன்று என்ன அப்படின்னா அந்த ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் டேஸில் வந்துட்டு முக்கியமான ஒன்று சைக்காலஜிக்கலி பெஸ்ட்டாக ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணும் அப்படின்னா ஒரு நாள் கூட வேஸ்ட் பண்ணக்கூடாது ஒரு நாள் கூட எப்படி சில பேர் எப்படிலாம் வேஸ்ட் பண்ணுவாங்கன்னா பதட்டத்தினாலே வேஸ்ட் பண்ணுவாங்க சில பேர் வந்து கோவப்படுறதுனால வேஸ்ட் பண்ணுவாங்க ப்ரிப்பேர் ஸ்ட்ரெஸ்டாக இருப்பாங்க சிம்பிள் ஸோ ஸ்ட்ரெஸ்ஸாக இருக்கிறத அவாய்ட் பண்ணுறதுக்காக ஒரு சின்ன ஒரு ஐடியா என்ன பண்ணலாம் அப்படின்னா லாஸ்ட் த மோஸ்ட் இம்பார்ட்டன் ஓகே இந்த இந்த வீடியோ சப்போஸ் ஃபேமிலி மெம்பர்ஸ் எல்லாம் பார்த்துட்டு இருப்பாங்க சில இடங்களில் ஃபேமிலியோட தான் இப்போ ஆன்லைன் கிளாஸ் அட்டன் பண்ணுறாங்க மீட் பண்ணி விட்டோம் அன்மியூட் பண்ணி விட்டோம்னா எல்லாரும் பேசுவாங்க கூட சரி ஓகே ஸோ நீங்கள் ஃபேமிலியோட மீட் பண்ணுறாங்க எல்லாரும் நோட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க இப்போதைக்கு ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ண கேண்டிடேட் அகேன் யூ ஓகே யூ கோயிங் டு குவாலிஃபை திஸ் டைம் ஸோ என்ன பண்ணணும் அப்படின்னா இந்த ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் டேஸில் தர் இஸ் நோ சேட் நோ ஆங்கிரி ப்ரிப்பரேஷன் டேஸ் வந்து கோவப்படக்கூடாது சோகமாக இருக்கக்கூடாது இது ஒன்று தான் ஓகே கோவப்படக்கூடாது சோகமா இருக்க கூடாது சோக மார்க்கு லைட்டா சோக மார்க்கு கணத்துல கை வச்சு உட்காரு அந்த மாதிரி கூட இருக்க கூடாது ஓகே அதாவது டே வந்து வேஸ்ட் பண்ண கூடாது ஒன் ஹவர் வேஸ்ட் பண்ணாலும் நம்மளுக்கு வேஸ்ட் தான் ஓகே ஸோ அதனால வந்துட்டு கோவப்படுறது மைண்ட வந்துட்டு ரொம்ப கூலா பேலன்ஸ்டா வச்சுக்கணும் ஓகே ஸ்ட்ரெஸ்டா இருக்க கூடாது ஸ்ட்ரெஸ் வந்து நல்லா படிக்க முடியாது ஆல்ரெடி டோல்ட் வாட் வி லேர்ன் வித் பிளஷர் வி நெவர் ஃபர்கட் ஓகே ஹாப்பியா லேர்ன் பண்ணும் ஓகே கிளாஸ் ரூம்ல அந்த மாதிரி இருக்கும் யூடியூப் வீடியோஸ் யூ கேன் ஃபைன் த யூடியூப் வீடியோ சக்சஸ் மீட் வீடியோஸ் எல்லாம் பாருங்க ஓகே அகாடமியோட இதுல எல்லாம் அவங்க எல்லாம் என்ன பேசுறாங்க அப்படின்னு இங்கிலீஷ் டிபார்ட்மெண்ட் பொறுத்தவரையில ஓகே Actually, the theme okay what we learn with adhigamana result edukonu appadina we need to be stress free but competitive exam appadina automatically stress uruvaakum but nam idha nam focus panna vendi irukku okay otherwise pass pannu pass pannu nenikiradhu further stress dhaan uruvaakum so okay so anyway sila qualities sila uh, prepare panna the exam la pass pannu appadina successful people kuriya qualities ne ensure panni avanga okay again na stress pandra okay nee edutha play padikanu nradha na solla na idha mattum nee ensure panikonga definitely you can do okay nee vandu worst student ah undukonga slow learner ah undukonga not a concern at all okay adu adu prachaney kedaadu but we going to try first nam try panna porom again best ah try panna porom maximum effort okay starting la vandu konja konja ma dhaan panna mudiyum okay again core structure andha maadha irukum starting la konja konja slow ah povum again middle la vandu oru romba idu vandrum okay starting la mattum konjam konjam slow ah irukum okay sila perukaga overall maximum result kaaga anal edai edai la konja one day break vandu varum adukku again half thandi chapdina break la irukadhu continuous ah varum adhe ma students alle able avangalaley panna mudiyum okay adu romba best structure and the best lecture ungal questions vandru best material okay definitely uh, study material potrala best ah irukum and indha adhiyum seri okay na unga edhir paakradhu inniki indha task mattum dhaan okay note panni vechirpinga nanikira okay so first again repeating already uh, room already ungal therinjirukom okay exercise 10 minutes exercise alladhu yoga okay pananum again
ஓகே லைக் இந்த வாட்டம் நான் கண்டிப்பா பாஸ் பண்ணுவோம்னு தெரியாது பட் நான் சொல்லுங்க நான் கண்டிப்பா பாஸ் பண்ணிடுறேன் நான் சொல்லுவேன் ஓகே எனக்கு எனக்கு அதுதான் ஸ்டார்டிங் டேஸ்ல நீ ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ண வச்சு ஸ்ட்ராங்கா அது நான் என்னை நம்ப வச்சு தென் நான் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ணேன் நான் ஸ்டார்டிங் டேஸ்ல அது என்ன தேவைப்படுச்சு ஓகே நான் உங்களுக்கு சொல்றது வந்துட்டு யூ செல்ஃப் மோட்டிவேஷன் உங்களால முடியும் சொல்லணும் மற்றவங்க உங்களை பத்தி என்ன வேணா சொல்லி போறாங்க அது கன்சனே கிடையாது ஓகே பட் யூ நீட் டு ஓகே இந்த விட கண்டிப்பா பண்ண போறீங்க அப்படின்னா நீங்க நினைக்கிறத பொறுத்தானா ஓகே நான் உங்களை வந்து கண்டிப்பா பாஸ் பண்ணுங்க கூட சொல்லலாம் ஆனா ஒரு ஒரு நாளும் பெஸ்டா ட்ரை பண்ணுங்கன்னு சொல்றேன் பெஸ்டா ட்ரை பண்ணி அச்சீவ் பண்ணுங்க ஒரு நாள் சக்சஸ்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கணும்னு அவசியம் இல்லை பட் சக்சஸ்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கு நீங்க ட்ரை பண்ணி இருக்கணும் ஓகே ட்ரை பண்ணுங்க சொல்றது உங்களோட குவாலிட்டிஸ் தான் படிச்சு முடிக்க முடியல பிரச்சனையே கிடையாது பட் ட்ரை பண்றதுல தப்பு பண்ணக்கூடாது ஓகே நான் சார் இப்போ சொன்னேன் நான் ஓகே அகைன் வந்துட்டு வாட்டர் கான்சியஸ் ஒன் ஆர் கோன்ஸ் வந்து வாட்டர் கன்சியூம் பண்ணணும் ஓகே ஐ நீட் அ ஸ்ட்ராங் ப்ரொஃபஸர் ஓகே ஆக்டிவா கம்மியான நேரத்தில் அதிகமாக படிக்க முடியும் ஓகேவா ஸோ வந்துட்டு வாட்டர் கன்சியூம் பண்ணிக்கோங்க கரெக்ட் கரெக்டான ஒரு லெவல் ஓகே டயட் சார்ட் வந்து சென்ட் பண்ணுங்க ஓகே நீங்கள் தான் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ண போகிறீங்க உங்களுக்கு தெரியும் உங்களுக்கு ஆல்ரெடி சோஃபா நீங்கள் நிறைய கேள்விப்பட்டிருப்பீங்க உங்களுக்கு எப்படி பெஸ்ட் ஹெல்த்துக்கு என்ன ஃபுட் இன்னைக்கு நீங்கள் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ண போகிறீங்க டயட் சார்ட் அண்ட் ஸ்ப்ரௌட்ஸ் ப்ரிப்பேர் பண்ண போகிறீங்க ஓகே அண்ட் ஃபைனலி நோ சார் நோ ஆங்கிரி ஓகே போகப்பட மாட்டீங்க சோகம் லைட்டாக சோகமாக இருக்கிறது கூட தப்பு தான் சின்னதாக அதாவது நினச்சினாலே மா டக்குன்னு டைவெர்ட் பண்ணிடணும் தட் இஸ் யூ நீட் டு டூ ஓகேவா வெல் ஃபைன் நெக்ஸ்ட் கோர்ஸ் டீடைல்ஸ் எல்லாமே நீங்கள் வந்து ஆல்ரெடி கொடுத்த ஃபோன் நம்பர்லேயே நீங்கள் கலெக்ட் பண்ணிக்கோங்க அகைன் ஐ வில் மீட் டூ இன் அகைன் இன் ஜிகே கிளாஸ் ஓகே அடுத்த கிளாஸில் மீட் பண்ணுறேன் டைம் ஆயிடுச்சு ஸோ ரெண்டு ரொம்ப நேரம் உட்காந்துட்டீங்க ஐம் சாரி பாய் ஏதாவது டவுட் இருந்துச்சுனா நீங்கள் கேட்கலாம் அதர்வைஸ் அதர் ஸ்டூடெண்ட் கேன் லீவ் பாய் 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 நோ டவுட் சார் happy to see you sir hi hi really motivated your voice sir <laughs> very jovial hmm next time ninga da pesa poringa epdi pass panninga abindra alkali ninga enna enna panna poringa abindra adhu okay actually pass pannittu next time vandu pesa solluvom ninga epdi prepare panninga abindra okay so uh, i i call ipo na ungalku solleren ninga da pesa poringa so ninga enna enna panninga illa illa record note panni vechukonga starting days la enna enna problem face panninga endradhu record panni vechukonga ena andha adha eppadi overcome panninga endradhu romba mukkiyama theviyana onnu okay yeah, fine okay i'm starting in pothala ek education class vandha romba best ah irukum 40 hours vandha plan pannirukom romba well planned well planned material adha naan nenikira adha result ku periy role play pannu abdin அதே <laughs> ஓகே எனக்கு ரிசல்ட் காட்டிலையும் ஃபஸ்ட்டு இம்பார்ட்டன் வந்து என்னோடய ஸ்டூடெண்ட்டோட ஹெல்த் ஓகே ஃபஸ்ட் திங் ஆக்டிவாக இருக்கணும் அப்படின்றது மை விஷன் டுவர்ட்ஸ் சரி ஓகே சி யூ சி யூ நெக்ஸ்ட் கிளாஸ் கம்மிங் கிளாஸ் ஓகே ஸோ நாளைக்கு உங்களுக்கு ஃபோர் பேப்பர் கிளாஸ் இருக்கும் இங்கிலீஷ் கிளாஸ் இருக்கும் பாய் பாய் சார்